And we are recording. All right. When last we left off, the Wolf Pack, in their ongoing struggle against the Empire and its War of Genocide, have been operating in the Verdant Bay Peninsula for the past week. And after a very busy few days, with events ranging from espionage, group diplomacy, skyship battles, eldritch horrors, curse-breaking, and dark alliances with their mortal foe, the pack has finally made it back to the underground city of Kurlaria, home to the rebels known as the Voiceless. After catching Toral up on everything, including the dark but tempting offer from the Blade, and looping Avandre in on their discoveries regarding the mystics, the pack took a night of much-needed rest and revelry. Only to find even more problems the next morning when they awoke, as Tez had uh, relayed some information on a dream he had, where it appeared another person had been bound to Demogorgon and made the aspect of pride, using the same ritual that had failed on Tez and gave him his powers. And now it appears they are somehow bound. But more disturbing was the gift left for Tyler the Druid in her sleep. Somehow defying the glyphs and wards around Krillaria, Cl the Blade somehow managed to deliver a spell token into her pocket without setting anything off in the process. And this token was to be used for a single charge of the True Resurrection spell, the promised payment for them taking on the torch. After some debate over whether or not it should be used, Toral managed to snag the token from you all and use it, naming Terranora Silver Redfire as the target of the spell. And in a swirl of magical energy, a body in the shape of Terranora was formed, took a single breath of air in panic, and passed out before everyone in Toral's arms. And that is where we're picking up immediately from there. Uh, it is the 20th day of the month of planting in the morning, and you guys are sitting in the command tent in Krillaria. Uh, this swirling magical energy has completely died down. Everything is quiet and still as possible. And Toral is sitting there on his knees holding the body of what appears to be a female uh, Eladrin elf, wearing kind of the same druid trappings that you had seen Ilrin Silver of the uh, Circle of Verdants wearing, albeit a little bit different, a little more urbanized, but this woman is the spitting image still of uh, Tyler, and you could easily tell it's her mom, and you guys are just standing there. Wolfpack, what would you like to do? I'm frozen. Ooh. Yeah, kind of the same. <laughs> Toral doesn't, I mean, he's frozen as well. Uh, Dros kind of backs up from you guys a little bit, just like, this is a lot. Doesn't say that out loud, just kind of the vibe as he steps away, and Avandre kind of picks up on that as well. We'll uh, go investigate some things, and be, we'll leave you guys um, to it. Ta -ta, and both of them disappear out the tent. Thor also doesn't say anything. He's just holding there, holding Terranora. Y'all step out of the tent, too. Give him some privacy. I'll go, too. I'll go, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Loki, you're There's not even there. Is Loki with us? No. Loki, uh, you're... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna get, get you he's been there this whole time <laughs> he's, been, he's been on the ship this whole time uh you've been hung over for the past couple of days um you okay, you decided here. to go shot for shot with jerry the halfling and <laughs> oh god yeah you you can imagine how that went uh even jerry was oh. concerned about after the second day <laughs> <laughs> i bet that was tough Oh, so yeah, you're uh, you're coming too, but we will we will get to you here in a second. Um, so yeah, uh, you guys step out of the tent, leaving just the twins. Uh, pretty, I mean, now the entire Red Fire family. Toral finally says out loud, "I, I wasn't expecting. I mean." He kind of, like, checks her pulse. I mean, she's alive. How? What? Why did you do that? Weren't you going to? It... Pr probably? I wasn't... 
I'm not ready. I wasn't ready to lose her. And I don't know. I don't know. Now that I have her again, even in some form, I don't think I want to lose her again. No. And no, I, I don't either. We should get her to a bed. Yeah. 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 And uh, you, you can almost see like immediately him shutting down a little bit of just military mind. Handle what's in front of you first. Uh, scoops her up in his arms. Immediately takes her out and starts heading towards uh, where you know his court. You haven't actually seen his quarters yet, but where you know his quarters to be. Do you guys stay there or regroup or do you follow? I'm following. I'm following. Okay. He takes you back uh, to one of the kind of private cave areas, uh, very similar to Avandre, where it's an actual like cave that's been walled off with uh, bits of stone like that have clearly been magically shaped. Uh, solid wood frame door. Uh, ha opens it up. Takes her inside. Inside, it's a very Spartan kind of uh, layout. Not a lot of de or decor, anything like that. Just the bare essentials. Bed, nightstand, uh, little pantry and things like that. Writing desk with some correspondence and stuff on it. Uh, very familiar to you, Taylor, because you've seen, you saw his office uh, back when you guys all lived outside of Elvenon. Uh, it's very military in nature. Um, you know, no real personal, like, items, things like that. Except maybe trophies. But even then, he doesn't have any trophies posted up in here. Immediately takes her uh, over to the bed. Lays her down as gently as possible. Kind of takes a step back and just wipes a bit of sweat from his brow. Maybe it was risky, but I. There, I'm worried. There was a there was a string attached to the to the note, and uh, I think I think it was more than just a string. I think it was a message, a metaphor, more than a message. But you know what I mean. Um, she's like staring. You're probably right. And whenever Avandre's got time, I'm going to have him look into that because it was risky and I probably shouldn't have done it, but the night I lost her was the night everything stopped for me. And I even at even at, <laughs> I hate I hate that it's come to this, but even the idea of getting a fraction of that back. I hope it was worth the risk, but I'm, I think it might've been at least for my own sanity. I hope so. I'm too. sorry. I, I can't even imagine what it was for you two. And I know I wasn't there in the aftermath to help you deal with it and process it. Truth be told, I don't think I've processed it much myself, given my reaction here, but... Well, no, you don't have to. No, I just have to deal with potentially resurrecting uh, a woman who might not even remember us, uh, who bears the face of the woman I love, and the mother of my children and might be under the control of a dark force that gave me the means to bring her back while also probably dealing with the political ramifications of risking all of our hides to do it because something tells me that something tells me the, a couple of the overseers probably aren't going to be happy with me for doing this but she's been them. gone a long time too long both of you make a perception check for me. Y 
you've only ever seen your father cry once. And it was the night that Terranora was buried. He stood outside of her grave, or off, off from her grave, staring at it. And he stood there for a solid hour and a half, not saying a word, not moving, not reacting to anything, as tears poured down him his face. This is now the second time you've seen this. He's a little more reactive this time, but he's just staring at her. Tears pouring down his face. I'm going to pull a group hug. I was just about to do that. <laughs> he he doesn't know, like it he takes him a half second that. to like react because he's very clearly like in the like tunnel vision at this point but as soon as he feels the both of you immediately wraps both of you in his arms as well and he's always been a bit bigger like even with you guys out there braving the wilds he's got a little bit on you as far as brawn and he's able to easily wrap the both of you up in his arms and you don't think you've ever had a hug that tight as the three of you just kind of stand there looking over your mother at this point And from that emotional scene, we're going to cut over real quick. <laughs> over to Loki. <laughs> so, a slight flashback, Loki. Uh, about an hour ago, about, well, we'll say like 30 minutes before any of that happened, any of the uh, emotional weight of that scene happens, you wake up in the barracks of the ship. You vaguely remember getting here at some point. You remember being fairly drunk when everyone got onto the ship and was getting ready to leave. Uh, you remember kind of bits and pieces from waking up through the past couple of days of, you know, taking just taking care of biological functions at that point, you know, get a little bit of water, use the bathroom, and immediately go back to sleep because somehow that absolute demon of a halfling, uh, he's got to be like 98% alcohol for how much he put away when you were going shot for shot with him. But you wake up, and you hear the sounds of just some basic, you know, people up on the decks uh, doing basic work around upkeep of the ship uh, as you come to. What would you like to do? Look around the ship to see if I could find anybody. Okay. At all. You start walking around, and you get up from the barracks area, go into one of the main decks, and... You see uh, what looks to be a dwarven male uh, kind of doing some upkeep around the wheel of the ship. So he notices you emerge. Oh, Master Loki! Looks like you're finally back with the land of the living! Yes. Yes, I am. Remind me never to do that again. Yeah, we probably should have warned you about Jerry. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a some weird kind of alcohol face spirit in a physical form. <laughs> Uh, highly recommend don't ever try to keep up with him in any way, shape, or form. I'm yeah, pretty sure he's he's mostly alcohol with like a little bit of fun and also maybe some drugs every once in a while mixed in. So that's just him, period. Uh, the rest of them, I believe, your new friends, they went into and he points over and you see you guys are you're the ship itself is docked on the ground. Uh, it's more down a little bit. On the starboard side of the ship is nothing but forest, deep, dense forest that you can't, you can barely see through. You know, you're still in the redwood forest. The left side is nothing but mountain, uh, and just sheer cliff face in most of it. Uh, as Rulo, the bosun, points. If you go down to uh, that rock mark there, and he kind of points it out, and he shows you the secret knock. If you no do that knock. Uh, someone will let you in, and they'll get you pointed in the right direction. Okay, thank you. And uh, another word of advice, get some protein as soon as you can. It'll make you feel better. Yep, I'll keep that in mind. All right. You head down uh, to the rock face, and you do the knock. Uh, there's an elf guard that opens up a bit of a rock. He looks, he goes... They told me you were probably at some point going to wake up. Uh, if you just follow the tunnel, 
Uh, you should be able to spot them. They're probably in the main area. Uh, otherwise, I can have a guard escort you. Find it. Continue through the tunnel, eventually opening into this massive underground uh, hollowed out mountain with plenty of like refugee tents. You see kids laughing and playing in the corner areas. Uh, a lot of people just doing basic camp work, uh, getting food and things ready, uh, trade or traff, trade crafts, things like that. A uh, couple guards kind of drilling over in one area, and what looks to be in this main pavilion area, this very large tent, you spot uh, your companions coming out of the main tent, at least some of your companions uh, coming out of the main tent, as this is when Finn and Tez walked out. Oh, hello, Loki. Hey, Tez. Oh, you look terrible. What happened? Your halfling of a fucking alcoholic demon happened. Oh, Jerry. Yes, you drink with him. He's quite an alcoholic indeed. You can't keep up with him. Can anyone? No, but guess what? What? Someone just came back to life. Out of thin air. Tell him, Finn. Yep. See? Yeah, the twin's dead mom came back to life. Uh, uh, oh, okay. About five seconds after he says that, uh, Toral comes walking out uh, with a body of a woman in his arms uh, with the twins in hot pursuit heading for some direction. Oh, see? Should we follow? <clears throat> I mean... We'll probably just go hang out someplace and they can find us when they're done. We could go get some goat's milk. Yes, Anywhere to get some protein or anything to Loki, eat. Goat's milk is great for hangovers. I give it to Jerry all the time. And it's... He drinks immediately after he has one sip. It cures him. Okay, let's go get some, please. Okay. Uh, We're gonna go get some goat's milk. All right. You guys head back to the kind of like pseudo tavern commissary area that you were at last night getting a, a little crunk, some of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you head back there, though. They're open for the morning. Uh, they've got people already sitting down, having some breakfast and drinks and of that nature. Uh, the proprietor sees you guys, immediately points to a uh, corner table for you guys to sit down. Comes over later, uh, sits down, mostly water, and then takes your drink order, brings back goat's milk. Um, it helps with the hangover a little bit. Uh, okay. It's not a, uh, at least for Loki, it's not a pure, perfect cure-all, but it is additive, at least. It's, a it's benefit, good, isn't it? Right. Yes. It, it, it's good. Good. About 15 minutes later, when they bring over a plate of just bacon, uh, that helps a little bit more as well. Mm. That's good too. In about five minutes after you guys start getting your food and just having breakfast, you know, quietly there, uh, you see Avandre come in. Uh, kind of looks around for a second, spots you guys finally. There you are. Um, first off, just not to warn you, I'm a simulacrum. I'm not actually here. The real me is still working with Drost. Uh, I just had a couple questions, because it seemed like things got a little heavy this morning. Um, Tez, you Ooh. had a... So, can you tell me more about that dream you had? Oh, um, yes. I woke up on a table, but I don't think it was me, technically, in the dream. It was almost like I was seeing through someone's eyes. But the people around were all wearing the robes that we were familiar with. Right, the robes of the mystics. Um, did they refer to you by any name or anything like that? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember, actually. Uh, they did. They referred to you as Prince Consort. Aha, that's correct. Oh, yes, I just remembered. Prince Consort. Oh, 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's a problem. Who's that? Tez, you wouldn't recognize that term. Uh, Loki and Finn definitely would recognize the term Prince Consort, though. Uh, it's a very specific person. Prince Consort Charles Malor, the uh, husband of the Empress. Oh, shit. Yay. Oh, dear, indeed. I don't know what part he's playing, but clearly he's a pawn in this, at the very least, if not higher. Oh, oh, oh no. So, um, is he like you, Taz? Oh, I don't know. Well, it would be hard to say, because from what you've described, Tez... It sounds like you went through uh, a bit of a ritual like that yourself with the mystics, did you not? I did. It didn't go exactly like we wanted it to, though. But it happened. Correct. And that's what's given you your interesting powers. They're a little unpredictable, but overall, very interesting. So I'm wondering if something went wrong with that. It's almost... I'm just spitballing here, uh, and again, simulacrum, I don't have the full brain capacity, but it's almost like whatever they were trying to do to you was going to make you into what Charles is now. I think they were trying to turn you into an aspect of Demogorgon. Oh, that's scary. A, a servant, basically. Hmm. Am I still fixed, or did hearing that name make my head hurt again? You're still fixed for the moment. Uh, it, You felt like a twinge, but it wasn't so much painful this time. It's just annoying. <clears throat> Interesting. So, they've made someone else the aspect that they tried to give to you unsuccessfully. Interesting, interesting. So, who would be the next... A what would be the next aspect? Huh. So many questions. I don't know. Neither do I, my dear friend. Neither do I. But it's something to start looking into at the very least. Anywho, uh, what would your what were your plans for the day? Uh, wh are you planning on heading out at any point soon in the next 24-48? Oh... Probably not. Actually, <clears throat> maybe you can help us with that. Um, oh? Do you guys have any, like, fire-resistant gear? Fire-resistant gear? Mm -hmm. I am not necessarily the one to ask about that. Uh, I'm more of the metaphysical side of the magic for the voiceless. The practical aspect, if you go down... I believe you've already been acquainted with our Overseer Dexterian, have you not? Yep. You would be the person to ask about that better than I would, unfortunately. I would be—I would assume they could either make something or provide something, but... Fire-resistant... You're going after the torch, aren't you? Oh! Somebody's got to. Good guess. You're not wrong. Someone does you need to... You motherfuckers don't seem overly inclined to do anything about him. Well, have you looked around? There's not exactly a healthy lineup of people capable of doing that. But it's okay. We'll do it. We'll take care of it. We're good at killing. I have no doubt of that. I'm going to tear his heart out and eat it. Well, that's... You know, I was going to say cruel, but he probably deserves it in some form or another. He does, I promise. You're probably right there. I would advise taking caution. He is... He's stronger than he should be. Let's put it that way. He's been on the radar for some time, longer than he has been associating with the Blade. And he's been known to be a much stronger mage than someone of his cali apparent caliber should be. It's the reason why no one who has gone after him so far has been able to do so. But... I'm sure you'll do fine. Me too. Oh, also, if you need transportation to Oasis, where I believe he's based out of, uh, let me know. I can send you there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Oh, 
Ok. Just a thought. Figured I'd offer. Anyway, uh, and he kind of stops for, for a second and like blank faces for a moment before emotion and thought comes back to it. Ah, seems like I'm needed. Toodaloo! And di literally disappears in a cloud of dust. Well, okay. So, what are you guys doing? I guess if the Red Fires haven't made another, have made an appearance, I guess we head down and talk to Dexterion. Red Fires, uh, at, as the group hug goes on, at what point does that group hug break off if it does? Three days later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably like a few minutes. Yeah, definitely at least two minutes. Yeah. Two to five minutes. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. This has been happening concurrently while you were having, you know, your group hug. So after the group hug, uh, Toral just kind of says, I think I'm just going to stay and watch over her, make sure, you know, everything's fine. Um, she feels very weak right now. I'm not sure if it's just a side effect of the spell or coming back. Um, you know, we saw minor resurrections and stuff when I was in the Rangers and people, when they came back, usually tended to be really exhausted. So I'm just going to kind of watch over her and, um, yeah, make sure she's all right. Um, I don't know if your friends need you guys for anything or what you guys are planning on doing now. I know this kind of probably threw a wrench into uh, most of the plans. Well, thankfully, our stuff has kind of grown past the whole revenge thing. Um, let us know if she wakes up. Will do. You'll be the first to know. Okay. I just take a long look and then I and then I go. Roll an inside check for me. Twenty one. Your mom, uh, she because she's just asleep right now, she looks very much at peace at the moment. Um, very still, shallow breathing, no reaction outside stimuli, things like that. Whereas your dad right now looks like a nervous wreck. Uh, he's fidgeting a little bit, um, which is very much out of character, but just kind of staring at her. Doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. It's a weird flip from what you see as kind of the, the established norm. Uh, when you guys were growing up, your dad was usually the very calm, peaceful one uh, due to all that military training, you know, trained to react in certain situations, not react in others, whereas your mom was much more exuberant uh, and showed, you know, reaction and emotion and things like that. So throws you off for a bit as you see this, the how things have changed, but you get the sense that she's fine for now. Okay. And that if anything is not fine, uh, Toral will probably not be fine with it, and you'll be the second person to know if he's the first. Sounds good. But you head off, and you end up hearing the sounds of uh, Tez boisterously or talking in the commissary, and all of you have grouped up. Hello. Hey. How's your mother? Sleeping. Okay. But, but, good. I think. Good. It's hard to hard to tell at this point, really. But hopefully, she's okay. Hmm. I'm slightly optimistic. Good. Me too. Then. What are we doing? 
What do we do? Uh, we're gonna go talk to the armor about some fire resistant gear so we can go kill the torch. Good idea. And we're going to kill him it. really good. Yeah, definitely. And with that, you guys head down into the Undercroft area. Uh, it's been, you know, a week or so, a little longer, I think, since you guys have been down here after you're getting your requested equipment. But the uh, constant ringing of hammers on steel and forges, uh, the bellows always running, the soft murmurings of enchanters over in the corners as they're applying minor enchantments to things. Is, this place is still in full production at this point. Uh, you can see over at the main table, though, the Overseer of Armament, uh, Dexterian Dunaramont, the little gnome artificer, as he's got welding goggles down, uh, a mask tied around his face as it looks like he's taking some kind of weird magical pole that has a very bright fire on it, and he's just kind of welding some pieces of armor together. Uh, as you guys kind of approach, he kind of looks up for half a second and notices, puts the fire out, pulls the goggles and mask off. Oh, you, t you guys, you're back. Uh, welcome. How can, uh, excuse me, and he wipes himself on his apron. How can, uh, the Overseer of Armaments and the Manufactorum help you today? Uh, we're looking for anything you have that's resistant to fire. Fire resistance. Well, we've got a few things that might be helpful for that. Uh, how fire resistant are you needing? Because we've got, like, uh minor stuff that we use for you know, like operating the forges and things like that. And then there's like the heavy hitting stuff that uh, is really more of a help. We're going to go kill the torch. So that kind of fire resistant. You see his brain kind of stop thinking for a second. He's like, I don't think I know who that is, but I'm assuming if he's named the torch, he's probably pretty fire powerful. So <laughs> let's, let's take a look here. He ends up pulling out uh, this big, just massive leather tome flips open. It looks, and you can kind of see uh, from your guys' angle, it looks almost like an inventory registry uh, constantly being updated. And as you're kind of watching, you're seeing some numbers and things change. Uh, you get the sense that it's probably magically enchanted, so there's multiple copies kind of around as people are keeping inventory of things. Let's see here. Let's see. Uh, looks like right now... I've got a couple different kinds of armor of fire resistance and one ring of fire resistance. Uh, if we need to make more of anything, though, I can do that. Uh, it'll just take a little bit of time and money to do so. But I'm guessing, and he kind of looks at you guys, I'm guessing that's not, it wasn't an issue the first time, probably not an issue the second time. Less of an issue this time. Even better. Okay. Let me do a full check here. Looks like I've got a set of scale mail of fire resistance, uh, studded leather, and chain mail. I'm not sure. Yeah. Scale mail, chain mail, and studded leather, and then one ring of fire resistance. Uh, it kind of looks around. I don't think two of those are going to be helpful to you guys, though. Considering I don't see you wearing armor like that already. Well, I don't need armor. That's true. You are fairly well. You're not fire resistant, I imagine, but you're fairly no. resistant in general. So I could catch on fire and burn. That is true. They could singe my mane. Definitely. Okay, yeah, that's kind of all I have at the moment. Um, unless you guys want to do custom orders, I can do the. Like I said, I can do those. It just takes golden some time. What's the time on making a couple more of those rings? Uh, the rings would be faster than the armor. The rings I could do. They cost a little more because they're making you know they're rings, but uh, I could probably do one of those if I put enough enchanters on it. Probably knock out one of those in a day. Hmm. What do you guys think? I don't know. Go 
Granted, I can have like multi I can have a couple people like working on it to kind of you know scatter her out a little bit. Um so that you know it's not like one per day, but like after a couple days you'd have like several because I'd have a couple crews working on it, but I mean, how about I'm assuming Loki you wear armor, right? Does he? Yeah. Oh, you're uh, new. Hi. Uh name's Dexter. Hi, hi Dexter. Name's Loki. What kind of what kind of armor are you wearing right now? I can almost hear the sound of Kendall clicking around looking at his character sheet. <laughs> hmm. I believe heavy armor. Uh it is chainmail. So yeah, he take, yeah. As you kind of like take a look, like pull pieces of the chain yeah. off, he's like, "Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, chainmail." Uh, yeah. So one of those will fit you. I've got yeah, I've got uh, armor or chainmail of fire resistance. And then he kind of looks around. I mean, two of you are kind of well, three of you are kind of wearing like leather styled armor. So I don't know if one of you wants that. I mean, I'd take it. So, that's good for me. That can be done. Uh, and then, I've got the ring. Who wants the ring right now? Well, so, <clears throat> who's left? I'm assuming Dros is going to need something, right? Oh, there's another member of your party? Yeah. Yeah, he's busy. He's with Avandre trying to figure out how somebody magically got stuff into the base oh. without him knowing. Yeah, that's that's kind of huge. Avandre takes his or takes their wards seriously. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we can set that if you want me to set the ring aside for uh, Drost, I can do well, that. Same. <clears throat> so, Tyler, you've got armor. Loki's got armor. Taylor, are you grabbing scale, or are you just are you going to want a ring too? Uh, I've got adamantine scale mail right now, so a ring would probably benefit me. All right, so three rings. So we're so we need. Finn, do you think I'll? I mean, do you want to be? I mean, I guess. How I think that fire I want to try. You? I want to try and him without it. I don't care. I want to kill him without it. Uh, I think it'll be fun. I want some old thicker than undies if I was fighting that dude. But you do you, man. It'll be fine. All right. So two rings. Well, Two rings, as well as the two pieces of armor and the ring that I already have. Just doing the math in my head here. Let's call it all said and told uh, about 17,000 gold. Done. Oh. Wow, you didn't even blink. Okay. We've got the money uh, on our ship, but we're not 100% sure it's safe to bring it in yet, so... No, Dros is a... Dros isn't sure it's safe to bring it in. Mm. Okay. The dude teleported a scroll inside. I don't think he really gives a shit about fucking... cursed money. Well, I was very happy to hear that uh, you were gonna just pay that, and now I'm a little less certain after all, hearing all that conversation. Uh, <laughs> I... I'll get start. You can take the items on credit right now, uh, and I'll get the other two started. If you could have someone look over the money and make sure that it's not cursed, because I didn't like that word, uh, mm. I I'd be happy to take payment at that point. Then, yeah, yeah, that's what like I, I think I, we're going to do. I figure you guys are kind of good for it, and also two of you are related to the boss, and I know where he lives, so. You might give him some space, yeah. though. You know, not going to question that. All right. Yep. Uh, he immediately has a page run and about 10 minutes later comes back with 
a set of chainmail of fire resistance, uh, a studded leather of fire resistance, and a ring of fire resistance. Ooh. So, for those who got it, do do do. Chain mail. All right, Loki's got his armor. Tyler, you were getting the studded? Yeah. Okay, uh, I've got your roll 20 sheet updated. If you want to throw it on your D&D Beyond one, feel free. Will do. It's just the studded leather armor of fire resistance. Okay, thanks. And who was getting the ring? Me. Okay. That was Joe, right? That said that, or was yes. that Matt? Okay. That was Joe. Do ring of fire resistance. But uh, and then yeah, uh, thank you. Dexterian gets guys those items. And says, come back in about. 24, 30-ish hour somewhere in there. We should have both of the rings ready for you by then. Sounds good. Okay. And uh, have payment ready by that point, hopefully? It'll be taken. Definitely be though. working on it, yes. Fair enough. Have a good day. And immediately gets back to work. Uh, goggles on. Back in the zone. Where to next? All right. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> I mean, we've got a flying ship. We can go back to fucking Elvenon. Is that where it is? That was the city you guys were at, yes. Yeah. I mean, we could go back there. We still got some... We still got some irons in the fire, right? <clears throat> okay, let's what go. What irons do we have? I don't remember. Um, the... That secret, like, underground group. I can't remember what their name is. That we were supposed to meet with. Oh, yeah. And then we did clear out that dude's warehouse, so we were going to talk to him about that. Though the torch kind Oh, yeah, of we still got to do that whole thing. Burned yeah, the whole place up, so. It was the Red Blossoms that uh, was the underground gang. Well, are you guys heading out from there then? Or because Dross is in the middle of something, but he can be pulled away uh, if you're taking him with you. Because it is a it takes a full day to fly to Elvanon. Or a better part of a day, at least. I mean, if Dross is in the middle of something. You've seen, I mean, you've seen him as you guys were kind of like moving around. You've seen him going around and like checking different spots with pieces of magical equipment, talking with Evandre, uh, like wrapped up in his own thing. But this whole process of like you guys dealing with the resurrection, getting breakfast, uh, you know, checking in on the items, and everything like that. It's been a couple hours since then. Um, if you ask, you can probably pull him off of there. You know that Evandre, like he also has a couple of copies of himself running around. So it's not like he's mission critical if needed. So if you guys wanted to head out, he could be spared. Should we have the money looked at before we leave and then at least leave the payment here? Yes. No. Probably. I mean, wasn't all the money staying here? I mean, it'd probably be safer here than on our ship.
Well, do you want to snag one of Avandre's copies to have it looked at? Probably would be a good idea. Okay. Oh. Easily enough, as one of them is just kind of walking by, uh, casting some spells in the air, checking things, uh, you catch his attention. Oh! How can I help? We uh we we've acquired some money and uh, we just want to make sure it's safe to bring in because it just appeared on our ship, thanks to a payment that we supposedly received, and we just want to make sure that it is safe to bring in. Considering you know things just appearing in here, we want to make sure this is safe to bring in. Right, 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 right. Uh, Drost mentioned that I don't think I've had a copy, and his face kind of goes slack for a second. I haven't had a copy run out there to go check it yet. Uh, do we all want to go take a look? Sure. If you're not busy, of course. I have a couple of different copies of me running around. It's perfectly fine. And uh, immediately they take off for the tunnel. You guys in tow, making it back onto the ship. Uh, down in the hold with the giant barrel of coin uh, that's in there. Avandre immediately begins casting spells. Uh that uh, stops halfway through. Oh, interesting. Let me take a look here. Huh. Kind of stops and thinks for a second. You said the coin that you were originally given, you threw it off of the ship, right? The, uh, the one... That. Yeah, the, tr like, the token that was given to you? Yes. Okay. I'm wondering if that's not why... This coin is perfectly fine. I should stop by saying that. The coin's fine. Uh, no curses or anything like that, it looks like. Uh, but I'm guessing that the reason that's the case is because the coin that transported it all isn't here. So, should be perfectly fine if you... I'm assuming you're using his payment for something, or if you plan to, feel free. This is normal last coin. Okay, thank you. Folks, anything else you need from me? Are you planning on leaving? I can have Drost come meet you out here. Uh, yeah, I think we had a couple things we wanted to run out and do while we had waiting for some gear to be made. Gotcha. Still have some uh, things out in the world to do, I understand. Yeah, I can have uh, Drost and then face go slack again. Comes back. Drost will be here shortly. Uh, they finished up working on something and I've given them a bit of homework to work on. Sounds good. All right. Well, if you don't need anything else from me, I'm going to get back to work then. Thank you for your time. Of course. And they disappear in a flash of dust. About five minutes later, Dros comes hustling up onto the ship. Uh, looks to have a couple extra scrolls tucked under his arm. Uh, some pieces of equipment that he was still holding on to. We're heading out. Yeah. Yep. That's the plan. I'm going to run the cool. payment down to the guys real quick before we leave. Gotcha. Uh, if anyone needs me to look at anything, I'll be in the hold. All right. Heads down. Uh, you kind of get the sense it's like a kid with a new toy. Uh, Drost has Drost got something from this interaction with Avandre that... Uh, has him a little excited to at least start working with or pouring over. Uh, you run the coin down, though, to Dexterian. Uh, do you take all of it, or are you just taking the agreed amount? Uh, the agreed amount, plus maybe mm -hmm. like an extra hundred. Okay. You wheel down like half a barrel, because I think you guys got like 30-something thousand from this, didn't you? I, I don't remember how much it was. Yeah, we got a decent amount. We got a good chunk. Yeah, it's you 100% have to get like a dolly to take this thing down. But uh, you wheel down a barrel of coin and put it right near Dexterian's desk. He just kind of looks, he's like, you know, I don't think I've ever had a barrel of money delivered, but that's interesting. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now you can thank say you. you have. Yeah, I in fact can say I have. Uh, yeah, hope the items serve you guys well and uh, come back sometime tomorrow slash day after we should have the rest of them 
We should be back in a day or so. That Hopefully. should work. We'll have them. All right, then I head back. All right. You guys are all back on the ship. Uh, Rulo calls out. Oi, Captain, are we heading out? Yes, we are. Back to Elvanon. Back to Elvanon it is. Starts making the calls to have the ship prepared for launch. Uh, moorings are removed. The arcane engine is engaged. And do you take the helm or you let uh, Rulo keep on it? Yeah, I'll let him do it. Okay. Rulo takes the ship up as the rebel yell takes to the skies and begins sailing out uh, back east towards Elvanon. If someone can please roll me a D100, I would greatly appreciate it. Who wants to do it? I'll do it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> 65. Okay, roll me another D20. Okay. Okay. It's clear skies for the most part during this day. Uh, you don't see too many clouds except off in the distance, off to the south. And as you guys continue flying, you hear the softest sound of thunder rumbling off way in the distance uh, to the south, southwest somewhere. Can I have everybody please make a perception check for me? Hmm. Oh, shoot. I got disadvantage toggled. It's bad either way. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't see I, shit. I, I, yeah, I think either way. Uh, it's not going to matter a whole lot there. Okay, and Loki. There you go. Uh, okay. Everyone but Tez, uh, as... Tess, I'm assuming you're just down in like the gun deck, just mm. figuring stuff out, still playing with the toys. Probably. A fun time down there. Uh, you're trying to teach the halflings uh, how to use the gun deck, except for Jerry, because that's just obviously a bad idea. Oh, um, yes, indeed. <laughs> Jerry is like explicit, or explicitly not allowed on this level of the ship uh, under any <laughs> circumstances, even with supervision. So, <laughs> oh, Jerry. Um. That would that yeah that's a rule that Rulo posted like there's a sign on the door to the to this area of the ship that just says no. <laughs> hmm. uh, the rest of you though, as you're kind of just milling about doing various things in the hold in the barracks area and on top deck, uh, and you hear that thunder rumbling off in the distance, and you kind of look over in the direction where it should be from. You don't see any storm clouds out there. In fact, uh, uh there's. There's not a single cloud in that direction. That's not thunder, then. Oh, shit. What direction is it? South by southwest. So, if we're here on the Meridian map, you guys are, like, roughly this area. And it sounds like it's coming from, like, that general direction. Ooh, we should go that way. Or not. That's fine. What do you guys think? Anybody else want to second the motion to go that way? I mean, I'm kind of curious to what it is, but... I am also very curious. No. I do Let's go check curious. it out. Captain, Finn. if you prefer, we can take us up higher for a uh, reconnaissance position. Use your spyglass. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'll get out the... Okay, you get the spyglass out as uh, all of you kind of like the deck shudders a little bit as the ship continues to rise even higher at a bit of a higher speed and pitch. Uh, getting to a high enough vantage point where it can see pretty much anything for 360 degrees. Uh, go ahead and make a and after a little bit of travel getting, you know, just kind of in that direction. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check with advantage since you're using the spyglass. 22. Uh, off in the distance, 
not quite you can see off in the distance vaguely in that direction is oakland uh you can see some of the buildings and things that aren't necessarily built into the trees uh no smoke or anything coming from oakland other than tip, what looks like typical city smoke uh farther south of there though you can see some pretty thick streams of smoke coming up from there uh still in the redwood forest not in the boarding fields area Do you continue heading that way? Yep. Okay. Continue heading that way. About 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, uh, you check with the spyglass again, and it looks like there is a section of the road. Uh, you know, the Redwood Forest is... There's only a couple of highways that can kind of cut through here, and the roads themselves are kind of obvious from above, because the tree line has been kind of cut down in those areas to allow for, you know, frequent traffic and things like that. There, the smoke columns are definitely coming from the road, and as you get a little bit closer, you can see what looks to be uh, a battlefield of some kind at this distance. Uh, numerous cr smoking craters all over the place. Uh, what looks to be destroyed wagons, things like that. Um, you can uh, you can see from the distance corpses. You're not entirely sure if they are imperial or not at this point. Give me one more perception check with advantage. Okay. Another 22. Uh, off well to the southeast uh, of your position, as you're kind of sweeping the, you know, the lines, you see just kind of a flicker of movement off uh, to your left, heading south, southeast. You kind of look, and you can see screaming, heading, continuing east, uh, you know, that kind of heading, you know, is a very fast moving object wreathed in what looks like fire. Mm, no one guess who that is. I think that's our guy, yeah. Can we catch him? I doubt it. Based on uh, how fast it looked like he was moving at that distance, you don't think you're able to catch him, at least at this moment. Not unless you caught his attention and reeled him in. Which I don't think oh. we need to do. Right. I don't think we're ready to fight him anyway, so... Maybe we're not prepared. Captain, I guess we might be so bold as to uh, suggest a course of action for this. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sounds it looks like he just bummed someone down there, right? Yep. That means proud to go check it out. Well, we can do that. I was gonna suggest continuing on a normal course, head back to Elvanon. The plan eventually is to take after that bugger, right? Oh yeah, he's fucking dead man walking. Once we're moored and docked, I can have uh, some of the crew step out and start getting materials to fireproof the Rebel Yell. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Might be the better option. As, mu as much as I hate to say it, after uh, seeing the bit of devastation he's capable of wreathing when we encountered him in the bay, I don't think there's going to be much left down there to check out. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, I agree. You guys all good with that? Head back to get headed back to Elvanon? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. You continue heading east after turning the ship back around and uh, resuming a normal cruise in height. Catching a bit of wind, uh, tailwind pushing you guys, and about nightfall, you're able to see off in the distance uh, the lights of Elphadon. Uh Rulo calls out again. Where would you like us to have be docked, Captain? Uh, in the forest? Or would you want me to circle around again and dock in the bay? I see you worked it okay for us. Let's do that. Can do. Be a couple of hours as we circle the city. Don't want to get too close and let them see us, but we can do it. Is anyone doing anything as you guys have been traveling and continuing to travel? Is anyone doing anything specific on the ship uh, that you want to get done? Anything downtime wise? 
Uh, were we short on? Do we shoot off some of our munitions? Do we need to make some more of those while we're? Uh, you did use many munitions, but Tez has been down on the gun deck long enough at this point. Uh, you guys re or the crew restocked while you guys were there. Uh, oh, yeah. at Krillaria, oh. so what you guys are topped off. Sounds like nothing else, though. That's all I can think of. Nothing all for right. me. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I think we're so. good. And then, yeah, uh, it's somewhere pretty close to midnight by the point uh, as the ship is eventually settled into the waters uh, up the coast from Elvedon in the Verdant Bay Peninsula area. Uh, a docking ramp is extended as the ship is properly moored in the cove. Uh, Rula calls out, you made the forest safer, I imagine, with uh, everything that happened the other day. So if you want to head out, make it to the city. Be pretty late, but they might let you in. Otherwise, you can stay here until the morning. Yeah, I'm off on my days. What day were we supposed to meet the Red Blossoms? Uh, that was like two days ago. By this point. Okay. Let me double check my notes here. Yeah, you made contact on the 17th uh, with them, and the plan was to eventually meet on the 18th. It is now the 20th going into the 21st. About three days late, but... Well, should we wait until morning and go talk to that... the guy that owned the building where the mad scientist lab was yeah I doubt they'd want visitors this late yeah I mean plus have been flying around all day so all right you guys bed down for the night the soft sounds of the water hitting the uh, ship it's different sensation and sound than you're used to on the ship uh, it's not very often you're on here while it's actually in the water, but it's a comfortable enough sleep. Next morning, you guys get ready and start heading out back to Elven On. Uh, as you guys are walking through the forest, can someone please give me a D100 check? Twenty-seven. Okay. Uh, as you guys are on the path, heading towards Elvenon, uh, eventually turning into a soft road, continue on there, and you kind of round a bend in the forest, and you can see uh, what looks like a couple of bodies on the uh, side of the road, just kind of collapsed. I mean, I'm going to uh, check them out. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, do we see anything? I'm going to be looking around before I go checking them out. Anyone yeah, who I'll... wants to uh, give me a perception check before getting too close, go ahead and give me one. Yeah, I'll toss Elvis up. Have him God damn it. take a peek, too. Okay. And I'm definitely Ooh. looking around. Nice. Way better than my eight. Oof. <laughs> uh, all right. Some of you pick up on it. Some of you are a little distracted. You're just like, I can't really make out much from this distance. Like, But those of you who are able to key it in, uh, Tyler and Loki and Tez, uh, you recognize... Well, Loki does not recognize these. Uh, you just see these weird, kind of like, odd, shapeless, gray, like gray fo or forms. Tez and Tyler, you recognize them as the like husk beings uh, that were like coming from the facility. Oh, there's a couple of them that are just laying Aww. on the ground, uh, not moving in any way, shape, or form. How far are we from the facility? Uh, from the facility, you're at least several miles from where the uh, the new crater is. But you also know you ran into these things a couple miles outside of Elvenon as well. They were kind of like literal over the place uh, in the peninsula. 
Well, kind of like on this path, right? Pretty much we were on headed this path. to Alvinon yeah. from the ship we saw him the yeah. first time. In fact, yeah, you ran on yeah. you ran into them first on this path when you met Drost. Okay. You guys get closer. I mean, they're yeah. assuming they're on our way, right? Yeah, they are pretty much like if you continue on the path to Elvenon, you're going to pass right by them because they're kind of off to the side a little bit. Okay. You guys continue on that, or do you try to deviate around, or what you doing? I don't care. I mean, they're not really moving, so I guess if it's not, it's not gonna take. We don't have to go out of our way. I'd say we just give them, you know, not like stepping over the top yeah. of them, but I'm not like swimming yeah. way, way around. <clears throat> okay, you guys continue on the path then, uh, kind of just keeping an eye on them as you do. You don't see a single movement uh, from any of them as you guys. You're even like, you're within spitting distance of them because they're you know just off the side of the road a little bit a couple feet they're not moving at all uh and in fact one of them looks a little more desiccated than normal uh skin's drawn real tight to the skeleton you get the sense that they're dead i mean do they have like injuries on them i mean i'm assuming we've shot them and blasted them and hacked them and whatever like it did damage right it did uh these ones currently are all face down You'd have to get over and flip the bodies over if you want to take a closer look. But from the exterior, mm. like their back, there's no apparent wounds on them. Yeah, I mean, if I'll go nudge one over. Okay. You go and you flip one of the ones over. Uh, one of the ones that previously like had the black oil leaking down their face and the spear arms. Uh, kind of just May chain, over. so I'd do that shit with May chain. Yeah. Or if it's enough, too you... late, I will immediately cast press the digitation on my shoe to clean the fucking gunk off it. <laughs> I'll say you can make it. It's fine. Uh, you flip it over. Uh, it just kind of lifelessly flops uh, with the spear arm. Uh, the like black oil that was leaking from its face previously has like dried and caked onto this thing's face. Uh, it kind of left like a dried puddle where the face was face down previously. Uh, face, no expression on it. Uh, no wounds from what you can see on the body. It looks like it's just dead somehow. What if it died when we blew up the like thing in the jars? Let's hope so. I don't know. These things are we don't need any more of those. They're hard to kill. All right, well, they're still gross, and now they're dead, so. Ready to get back <laughs> on the road? Yeah. Okay. All right. You guys continue on the road, and about an hour later, uh, it's now getting into late morning, but at the city gates of Elvanon are wide open as you approach the uh, city itself. Specifically the East Wall District, uh, the kind of Imperial aligned faction there. But the guards don't give you any hassle. They don't give anyone any hassle as they walk into the city uh, and you're back in the town. Where are you heading? Um, I guess we're going to talk to that business owner. forgot his name, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Good. Or we could yeah. go to the shadier part of town and be a little more assertive to meet the Red Blossoms. Oh. That sounds fun. That might be good this time of day. Uh. <clears throat> I'm sure there's fucking street urchins and fucking pickpockets running around. I'm sure Oops. one of them will point us the right yeah, way. Yeah, I'd, I'd watch your pockets. 
No, I mean, but they'll be. I'm able gonna to, like, turn into a cat. The blossoms. There you go. All right, you guys head south uh, down to the uh, Mortalia Canal Ray District, uh, a little more where you met the pickpockets and and gang apparent gang member last time. Uh, you guys start walking through, and everyone, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. Loki, you've never actually been in Elvenon. You've only ever heard stories, so this is kind of all of a shock to you. But, you know, growing up the way you did and with the organization you did, you have an eye for being able to kind of pick up on the vibes of large crowds of people. As you guys are just kind of walking through the city, uh, along with uh, Tyler, you pick up on this as well. And to some degree, Tez, uh, the people in the city are a little on edge. Um, no one seems to be making like eye contact with anyone as they're kind of walking, unless they have like a specific purpose for talking to someone. Like everyone's just kind of keeping their heads down. Even in the Imperial District uh, in East Wall, everyone's just kind of like trying to get from point A to point B. No conversation, you know, no greeting your neighbors, anything like that. It's a weird feeling given the last time you were in here. Uh, it was almost like there was no real war in the city. Now everyone's kind of a little on edge at this point. Um, but you make your way down into the uh, district itself. And Loki and Tyler, both of you spot, uh, as you're kind of passing by, um, what looked to be in one alleyway, a couple of just people talk, like kind of hold over talking. One of them looks to have a tattoo on their neck of a red flower. What would you guys like to do? Um, I'm just gonna look at look at that guy, look back at the group, sit and start pretending I'm cleaning myself as a cat. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll use awaken like, mind. Hey, just just to notify them that there's something there. I'll use. Do I notice? You pick up cat, on Pat Tyler, Tyler. Uh, kind of pointing that. Uh, and you actually recognize one of the people in that group. You don't recognize the one that has, like, you can see the, now that she's pointed it out, uh, the one with the flower tattoo. Mm -hmm. The uh, One of the people that that person is talking to, though, is the thug you talked with and made the deal with. Perfect. Uh, how close are we to him? About 45 feet away at this point. Well, when I get, if I get within 30 feet of him, I'm going to use Awaken Mind to talk to him. Okay. You're able to kind of, you know, actually, I'll, I'll say, because we haven't had a good one in a while, roll a stealth check. Make it, like, kind of nonchalant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nineteen. You're an old hand at this. This is, this is a skill you've, uh, quickly learn how to make yourself move and not really be observed uh, while moving through crowds and things like that. You're able to get in position and you know, like if you open your mind right now, you could talk to him. Psst. Hey. Kinda, I know I miss, like, you... I know, I know I missed my appointment the other night, but we'd still like to talk to your boss. You can see them kind of like stop and tense up. The other two in the group are still talking. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be like responding to that conversation at least. What the fuck? You're going to have to like talk louder because I can't hear you. I can only talk to you. Kind of looks around. Spots you finally. I'll give him a little finger wave hey buddy walks a little bit closer and just kind of positions himself like within whispering distance <laughs> but 
trying to make it look like he's not exactly talking to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You did miss your appointment. Yeah, some things came up. I bet. Not sure the boss wants to meet you anymore after you stood him up. Yeah. I think you will. I mean, you guys don't like the Empire, right? I get the impression. Nobody likes the Empire around here. At least no, not the, uh, at least no one who has pleasantly shaped ears. Kind of point and you kind of makes like a look at you and you can see like it's a half elf. So mm -hmm. the dig is there, but. Yeah, well, don't let the ear shape fool you. I'm no friend of the Empire, so. Right, right. And uh, what exactly do you have to offer my boss, if anything? I mean, we just, we'd like to talk about common interests. I.e. getting the Empire out of uh, Elvenon. I don't know if you've heard about Yord. Rumors have been going around. Of course, no one's allowed to talk about it. A few people have already been snatched up by the Peacekeepers. Well, tell your boss that he can get a uh, first-hand update on what happened in Yord. Go ahead and make a persuasion check for me. I get to roll advantage, too, because I got the fucking you hat do. on. You have the captain's hat. Hey. Oh, baby. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Okay, I will say this. Uh, Dros wouldn't be. Dros is still on the ship doing like research and stuff. Dros would have cast one of their uh, spells on you, like probably realizing you were going to be doing diplomacy. Would have cast uh, a reroll spell for you. So if you want to roll one more time <laughs> flat, thanks, Dros. Feel free. <laughs> it was one of the few things Casey said that he would have done. So <laughs> nice. Fifteen. Okay. Thug just kind of, huh. well, kind of see him thinking it over in the head, like, am I going to get in trouble for doing this or not? Three hours by Saurian Green inside the portal. Uh, I'll make sure someone with import is there. I can't guarantee it'll be my boss, but it'll be someone on their behalf. Yeah. Uh, He heads back over, kind of taps his two buddies on the shoulder, and they start heading off uh, deeper into the alleyway, <laughs> duck around a corner. I'll relay what went down to the group. Three hours inside the green. Oh, okay. So, I don't know what y'all want to do for a couple of hours, but we got some time to kill. I don't have anything to do. I mean, we could go to a... I mean, I'm assuming we're going to get an update from the Blossoms on why everybody's so fucking tense around town, but we could go to a fucking... We could go to a bar... A tavern maybe see if we can find out some more info it's an how's option. that sound I think we really can't be late for this appointment though so whatever we do we gotta keep an eye on that yeah any objections to that plan no no objections here no objection. Tyler probably it. lead them to a good bar. Easy enough to do. Uh, well, how how good of a bar are you taking them to? Because you haven't been there in a minute, but you know that the Celestial Wharfs will have like really mm -hmm. good places, or you know a couple good places in Old Elven area. Like I'm thinking, like mid level, so we can actually learn some shit. 
Uh, the Royale, where you stayed the last or last time you were in town, would probably be a good bet then. All right, I'll take it back there. All right, you guys head back uh, to the Royale on the Street of Green. Still, just kind of picking up the vibe in the city that uh, everything's on edge. People aren't like even here in Old Elveniria, where you know a lot of these smaller communities kind of come together as like family and you know neighborhoods. A lot of that vibe is a little gone right now. People are just kind of like, let's get our business done. Let's go home. Be safe. You are also noticing now, now that you're away from uh, East Wall and the Mort or the canal area, there's a, a bit of a heavier troop presence as well. Uh, and not necessarily the... Uh, what did I name them for the city? It was... Oh, where's the name of the guard? It's not specifically. It's not the Elvenon guard. Uh, it's the actual like normal Imperial Legion uh, patrolling around. Hmm. But you're able to make it to uh, the Royale. By this point, it's a little bit after the lunch rush. Uh, after you know, kind of wandering through the city, so. Plenty of tables to get. Uh, the owner kind of spots you guys. You guys need uh, just table or rooms or how can I help? Uh, just table for now. Fair enough. We'll get a couple drinks sent your way. Five goat's milks, right? Or four? Uh, ale yeah, food. he can have uh, four goat's milks. I, <laughs> I think I remember this guy. Yeah, uh, one oh. goat milk, four ales. Okay. Yep. All right. A couple minutes later, all the drinks are uh, served. I'll uh, slide a gold coin on the table. So, uh, what's it's got everybody on edge around town? Oh, you guys haven't heard? Mm hmm. One of the uh, the Trenicell kids got arrested, apparently, uh, accused of treason. To pretty much all of you, the name Trenicell doesn't mean anything. To the twins, though, you know that they're the, like, second big family uh, here in the city. The Visorians kind of run everything, and if oh. anyone, like, if there was ever any competition to that position, it would be the Trenicells. Uh who you also know suffered a bit of an like social issue a couple of years back when the or the head of the Trenicell family was accused of treason. And it sounds like now one of his sons might have been accused of the same thing as well. As uh, a yeah. Reed the owner. Yeah, uh one I can't remember which of the I did it. Uh day or two ago something like that i guess there was some dignitary that was in town uh from the empire there wasn't really any fanfare for it like normally they you know like to parade up and down the streets when someone important comes by to elven on but nothing for this one but apparently some attempt was made on their life and uh i guess it got traced back to one of the trenicell kids somehow i mean doesn't you know, you hear the gossip, Doesn't it's not that surprising. They've already been accused of it once, but yeah, apparently they got uh, picked up for that, and Visorians cr are trying to crack down a little harder now on it, and asked if a whole nother uh, like, legion could come in and kind of handle some of the local policing. Huh. Did you say this dignitary got killed, or just attempted to kill? Uh, just some attempt on him. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hear that they. I didn't hear that they died. Uh, I think they are. If they are, they'd be down by. Uh, if they are, they're probably in Eldare Harbor. I think they were already docked there to begin with, but they apparently haven't been staying in the city just on their ship. You said you don't know who it is. Just some. I can't up. remember. I can't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know who the dignitary is. I heard it was someone important. Uh, Trying to remember. Do I, get, I don't get the gist. He's like fishing for more money, right? Roll an insight check. 
Because if this is one of those, oh, I'm thinking, I can't remember the name. <laughs> oh, I got, was it Benjamin Franklin? No, that's this guy's name. So just an 18, because it's not yep. an advantage. Uh, 18. No, you don't get the sense that this guy's fishing for information. Uh, you get the sense that you know enough from being in Hilltown, which is also a major city. When rumors like this spread, uh, they t there tend to be a lot of like false rumors about it. Mm -hmm. And whatever false rumors are out there, he's probably trying not to... like. This is, He's giving you the gist of it. He's probably heard a couple names, but there's no way of knowing who it actually was. He doesn't actually know. Um, okay. So rather than like perpetuate a false rumor, he's just giving the information that has been confirmed enough. Okay. I'll slide him another gold coin just for the... Oh. Didn't appreciate need to, it. but always appreciate the tip. And uh, let me know if you guys need anything else. Will do. Well, that might be something to look into. Now what do we do? Well, we finish our drinks, and then we head over to the green. Okay. After that, we could head to the harbor if it doesn't take too long. Yeah, I mean, unless we want to split up, part of us go to the harbor, scope it out, the other of us head to the green. You would know, uh, the two of you locals would know, Eldaria Harbor isn't a place that you just go into. Uh, you have to be very like you have to own property in the city and also like have special permission of from the government uh you're not entirely sure the specifics of it but you know that there's something that prevents people who aren't allowed from actually entering uh the harbor area we need to gain access so we could ask about it we could break in we're good at that eh, i wish we could not that important huh a little more difficult than that. It's like a whole thing. We could come in from the ocean and swim. You know well, what? I think you're onto something there, Tess. Okay. Or we could just ask the blossoms. They'll probably know. I mean, Let's they may have more yeah. info. Let's go talk to them first. They might have an in. Who knows? Yep. So, who is the. What was the family that we were? Was the guy that we were supposed to go talk to the one of the Trenicels? No, Trenicels. Uh, the guy who owned the facility is Imrian. He just kind of goes by that name. Um, he's a elven bureaucrat and business owner and things like that. He has ties to the po like the political scene here, uh, specifically with the Empire directly, uh, as well as ties to the Visorian family who runs uh, Elvenon. But as far as you're aware, Imreen isn't actually a member of any of these families. He's kind of his own political entity. But Head are you guys just all right, you're heading for the green. It's been a couple hours by this point, so you're able to navigate through, and uh, you do see... You have to pass by it in order to get to the Visorian green, but you see Kai Visoria, the central, like, citadel of the Visorian family, uh, with a very heavily increased uh, Imperial Legion presence. Uh, specifically, not the Green Guard. I finally found the name for it. Uh, the it's not It's specifically not locals anymore. It is now the... Uh, red and gray garbed Imperial Legion, just the run of the mill soldiers uh, guarding the facility now. In fact, you haven't Please. seen a whole lot of Green Guard as you've been yeah. walking through the city. How about uh, Lightbringers? Any of those fuckers around? One moment. As you guys get uh, too. 
as you guys are like skirting around kind of heading to the green there is a single light bringer uh kind of posted up near the front of Kai, like the entrance to kai Visoria. doesn't appear to be interacting with any of the other legion uh around it just standing perfectly still if you weren't aware of what was in that suit and how they operate you'd assume it was just a like a suit of armor posted up as a display but you recognize a light bringer when you see one or light blade excuse me Things like cockroaches, when you see one, there's probably a dozen more lurking around somewhere. Easily. Well. All right. But you guys eventually pass through the portal uh, leading into the Visorian Green, and once again are surrounded. Uh, the air, like, the air isn't exactly stuffy or, like, super polluted in Elvenon, but. It's not as fresh and natural as like when you guys are walking through the forest. As soon as you step through the portal, you're back in that kind of forest. Like everything smells fresh and natural and cared for. Uh, everything seems to light up a little bit more. The sunlight seems a little more intense in here. Uh, overall, just a very powerful experience in here. Tyler, roll me a wisdom check, please. Eleven. Okay. Nothing of note. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys continue <laughs> in, though. Uh, eventually kind of heading just for the heart. You weren't told a specific spot in the Visorian Green, so you just kind of start meandering, and you see a couple of people having, like, picnics and things like that. Uh, less than there were the first time you came through here. But there are still a couple of people just kind of enjoying the space. Uh, and hanging out there. Everybody go ahead and give me a perception check. If you could, please. Okay. The twins, you're back in your natural element, so everything just kind of heightened for you guys. You guys feel this kind of energy just coming up from the green itself and kind of opens up your senses a little bit more. And you spot uh, an individual about 100 or so feet off, just kind of one person hanging out, uh, leaning up against a tree. Doesn't seem like he's there for any specific purpose uh, other than just relaxing, just kind of leaning just casually walking or looking as people are kind of going by. Stands out just enough for you to catch your eye, though. I just kind of like. Uh, like elbow fin lightly and just nod over to him. Mm. Nice. Um, then yeah, I will try to nonchalantly get close enough. Easily enough. And then use Awaken Mind. You with okay. Red Blossoms? That depends. You the ones I'm supposed to be watching for? You look like you're talking to yourself, dude. Like, like tap your side of your nose if you're with the Red Blossoms. Kind of rolls his eyes, goes and kind of scratches his nose and taps it. Uh, and I'll just walk up to him. <clears throat> Guessing you are the uh, people? Yep. Cool. Follow me. And uh, he just starts walking off deeper into the green, uh, into kind of a more wooded area, away from the kind of open park style. Guessing you guys follow? Mm hmm. Yeah. Of okay. course. You guys start following, and about a couple minutes in, maybe five at the most, uh, once you guys are like deeply into the woods here, all looks around, moves 
pieces of uh, shrubbery and kind of foliage over and lifts up what looks to be a trap door just hidden here in the green. It was completely cool. hidden. Yeah. Just kind of opens it up, uh, makes sure that the ladder's there. You guys go first. I got to close it up behind you. How long has that been there? I don't. I don't think I have to tell you that. Eh, worth shot. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll climb down. It's like okay. steps or a ladder. Uh, it's ladder, a canted ladder, so you can almost kind of step, but it's a little precarious. If you do it as a ladder, it's probably safer. Okay. How far down is it? About thirty feet. And at about the 20 foot mark, you kind of feel that like portal sensation as you walk into the green. You can kind of feel it fade, like you're passing through it and exiting the Visorian green. But you guys are all down there. Uh, and you can see you just, you're just kind of in this like underground cave area. Uh, there's a couple torches mounted on the walls and one other guy down there. Uh, who just kind of looks. So, you're the uh, people wanting to meet with the Red Blossoms, is that it? Mm-hmm. And who exactly are you? Uh, we represent a party with mutual interests. Can you be any more specific than that? Because I represent a party that might have those interests too, and I want to make know, sure that I'm not you stepping know about on my the own voices. Coast. Oh. Okay, not who I thought you were with. That's interesting. So you're with the Rebels. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're like affiliated. Before I say anything else that might be self-incriminating, would you mind uh, being subjected to a spell? Depends on what the spell is. Zone of Truth, I'm going to ask you three questions. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, he flicks a coin and it kind of lands on the ground and this kind of circle lights up on the ground. Uh, anyone here who, which is, I mean, it's all of you guys. Uh, he's also subjected to the spell, but he chooses to fail. You can choose to fail or if you want to try and resist. I believe it's a wisdom save, but let me make sure of that. of truth there it is uh, charisma save okay uh is there anyone here that tries to resist the spell I'm not. this does not nope <clears throat> nope okay all of you choose to fail so for the uh the duration of this uh you cannot speak any actual lies uh, you can try to avoid answering and things like that and, like, hiding things, but if you try to actually deceive, you physically cannot do it. The guy kind of looks. Are you guys actually with the voiceless, or are you peacekeepers? Definitely not peacekeepers. Oh, thank the fuck. We had one other person try this already, and we picked him up as a peacekeeper. Horrible. Fucking. Well, they, was it, their name wasn't Lawrence, was it? No, no, I don't you even know his a, name. I think we, you so we, we got to this point. Named and, Lawrence, I'll pay good money for his location. Noted. Okay, so you're with the voiceless. What exactly mm -hmm. are you like doing here, looking for? Fomenting rebellion. Like you heard about Yord? We have. Who do you think fucking got that popping off? We heard this they were crew. just an open rebellion. No one's taking credit for it yet, other than the city. Oh, yeah, no, we've fucking murked the shit out of a bunch of uh, Imperial soldiers, and uh, you ever hear of the Traveler? Dude, mm, you still have a hat, kind of like this, have. flying ship? Can't say I have. But These I don't... Blades guys were a lot more well-known. Apparently not. Nobody knows them. No shit. That's what I talk about, I'm like... You guys know these motherfuckers are like, who? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, well, uh, never heard it, but uh, sounds impressive, I guess. Yeah, I mean, dude had a flying ship. He was I mean, a fairly okay. that that is a asset cool. of the like, empire. I have, to, I have to admit that that is fairly cool. Um, okay, so you're here to foment rebellion. Uh, yeah. So you're just here looking for alliances, then? Yeah, we heard you guys don't like the empire. We thought maybe our interests align. Putting it mildly. Um, fair enough. Okay, yeah. Like, well, uh, our job is to get all of the towns up here to get loose. Oakland's oh, we got to go back to. We oh, so you're trying to do like a full rebellion. rebellion. Yeah, no, oh. the empire sucks. Yeah, no good. Like those motherfuckers got to well, I mean, go. You know, I agree. Just that's huge. Like the empire's massive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, cards on the table. I'm not actually the boss here. I'm just the doorman, I guess you'd call it. Um, one of the doormen. So I'm just here. I was just supposed to make sure that you know you guys weren't trying to murder us all. So, uh, name's Clyde. Hi. And, oh, uh, hi. Clyde, guess what? What's I, up? I don't like goat's milk. What's it say? What What happens in some line? <laughs> he just can't say it. You get oh. halfway through that statement. Like, and you, yeah, oh. you, 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 like, as soon as you start saying goat, it, you physically, like, your tongue goes dead and you can't say it. I don't like goat. What the? It works. I don't like goat. Hey, Taylor, you know where's that, that ring? Is, big guy. Oh, what ring? <laughs> you know the ring. <laughs> really? We're doing this now? Here? For other people? <laughs> I, mean, I think this is the perfect place to do it. It's like this zone of truth. <laughs> I have it on me. Yeah. Where at? <laughs> I'll see it. Now, again, are we really doing this here in front of other people? It's the perfect time. Don't pay, don't pay me no mind. I'm not paying attention. No, Thanks, fine. Clyde. <laughs> oh, shit. Thanks, buddy. It's hey, Clyde, speaking toe. of. Nice. Perfect. That's a weird spot for it. Is it comfortable? Not particularly, but it's not where? in where? sight. So. Yeah, that's true. I guess we better, like, put her on your wiener. That would have been super inappropriate. <laughs> the ring's a little small for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Clyde, speaking of, what do you know about the Trinicel kid that got pinched for trying to murder somebody? And also, who did he try to murder? Clyde just kind of stopped. And, like, he, he's been cleaning his fingernails this whole time, like, lo literally not paying attention to you guys. Because uh, that's not what he's paid to do. Um... Oh, yeah, that. Uh, so, <laughs> funny story. Uh, that's all a lie. Like, pretty sure that that's oh. just imperial propaganda. Uh, my boss can tell you more about that. I'm sure she's going to want to talk to you about that a lot more than anything I can say about it. So, uh, yeah, if you guys want to, and he kind of throws another coin at uh, this kind of like stone arch off a little ways down the hall arch lights up with blue light step through there and uh she'll be there can't miss her okay and with that you step out of the zone of truth all taking a nice big <laughs> deep breath as you feel the ability to lie come back to you uh oh, i don't like goat's milk well that's better Oh, but I that's do. What you were saying, oh, <laughs> I do. Oh, that's that. exciting. I thought you were trying to say you don't like girls. Oh, I don't care. Because I was like, I mean, it was like, okay, man. I mean, good for you, but no, nah, it's goat's milk for sure. I fair enough. Like it. That's funny. Okay, you guys go. all walk through the portal into what looks to be uh, just a warehouse. Uh, you're, you kind of step through this like arch and immediately look there. It's just a normal door behind you, uh, lit up with the same blue light. Doesn't look like it goes to the outside. Like it's a functional door. It literally is just a doorway arch. Um, best you can tell though, you're inside of an actual warehouse. Uh, 
there's a couple other people kind of scattered around different crates, kind of going through stuff. Uh, all kind of stop and look at you. And one of them in particular catches your eye. Uh, most of them are just kind of, you know, half elves, dwarves, uh, a couple full blooded elves, but not too many. One catches your eye, though. Uh, Blue skinned individual, uh, sharp elf point ears, uh, kind of this like green, almost seaweed colored hair tied back in a very, very tight bun, wearing kind of brown leather armor uh, with pattern of waves on it. She kind of sees you guys walks over. So you guys are the uh, ones asking around? You must be the boss. Indeed I am, and I'm guessing if Clyde let you through, he made sure you weren't uh, some kind of snitch, so that's a plus at least. Nope, so, definitely uh, not Imperial. Good to know, so who the fuck are you? Uh, we represent the voiceless. Interesting. Okay. Rebellion. I can get behind that. That's the idea. Well, name Saria Vaminor, and uh, I'm the leader of the Red Blossoms. So, I guess, what do uh, you have in mind for this rebellion of yours? Um, you know, just the usual... Like, kicking the Empire out, declaring independence, like, form an alliance, possibly with Yord, and then eventually Oakland. Like, separate out completely from the Empire. Okay, well, that sounds like a long-term thing. What about in the short term? What were you planning to do to actually, like, free Elvenon here? Well, that's kind of what we came to you for. This is kind of your turf. We were just more... We have the resources if you have the guidance and direction. Well, we don't really have either of those because we're more... Ah, oh, fuck it. There's no point. Um, we're not at our height anymore. Um, I know I don't know where you heard about us from, but if, they, if someone told you that we were some kind of rebel group or something like that, I think you might have been a little duped. I mean, the message uh, said you guys were like vandals and like yeah dissidents about, nothing really major we were more hoping all to we like nowadays. help you guys take it to the next level like you guys are JV we want to get you up to like varsity level like shit starters gotcha gotcha well I can't say I won't say no to that because that does sound interesting at the very least um not sure how we go about doing that, especially with the city on red alert now, but yeah. So the whole Clyde said, you'd have the details on what happened. So we heard that, that Trinicel kid got arrested for trying to kill some diplomat unsuccessfully. Diplomat's yeah. name was not released, but Clyde said that's bullshit. So yeah. Why don't uh, you break it down? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's 100% bullshit because I know who the person was that was almost a sat or, almost assassinated uh not even an imperial diplomat so they spun that in order to justify bringing more troops into the city so mm -hmm. uh hey why don't you go get luke all right oh and, uh, luke. one of the uh el like half elves kind of perks up immediately runs into one of the back rooms yeah so here's the real deal uh someone i don't know who the kid really is he doesn't want to talk to me about it but this kid came into town uh was like i don't know how he got in again refuses to talk to me about any of it uh apparently racked up a bit of a gambling debt and was trying to weasel his way out of it and the trenicel kid i guess bought him out of his debt don't know why again this is just coming from what my people on the ground are saying um bought the kid out of his debt they were seen walking around and that was kind of the end of it until the next morning when the trenicel kid got pinched uh, the Visorians are saying that he tried to assassinate that kid. The kid didn't know where to go and started kind of just trying to hide in the city. Uh, he doesn't know where the fuck he's going, though. He's not from around here. So one of my guys picked him up after figuring out what the hell was going on and brought him here. So not an Imperial diplomat, though. That much I can tell you. So guarantee that whatever rumors you've been hearing about what happened, not real. All fabrication. So why did they want to? Why did they go after the Trinicel kid? Uh, because the Trinicels are always trying to start shit with Visorians. The Visorians don't like having anyone that tries to voice any kind of you know opposition to them. 
and with the war with this whole sorry not a war as they're phrasing it but the extended conflict against insur or insurrectionist or guerrillas guessing you guys uh with the conflict going on the visorians don't like taking any shit from anyone so anyone who voices like hey those are our people out there being killed uh gets told to shut the fuck up and sit down very quickly and the Trenicels have a habit of, when being told that, not doing that. Um, are they doing so, it because they're like believers in the cause, or are they just doing it because they want power and the Vizarians have it? I'm going to say give me a persuasion check at this point. Uh, the conversation is going on. This is now the point, like, you guys have kind of had a bit of back and forth with information. This is going to be a tipping point to see if she trusts you or not. And you do get advantage on it. <laughs> 18. Okay. I'm just going to roll real quick. All right. She kind of eyes you up and down. So they're not entirely uh, wrong when they call the Trenicels traitors and shit starters. Uh, in fact, one of the former benefactors of our group and the reason we're not doing as hot as we used to be. Um, don't know. You probably don't know much about Elven on history, I'm guessing, because you're not from around here, and also you've got soft ears. Uh, looks over at the two half-elves, though, the twins. Guessing you two are from around here, though? You kind of got the look of the druids and stuff. Born and raised. Fair enough. Uh, you remember uh, Zelfar? You guys recognize that's the uh, head of the Trenicel family that got arrested a couple years back. Yeah. Yeah, Zelfar was bankrolling us. Uh, like, the things he got accused of, the whole, like, treason and all that stuff, technically not inaccurate when he was accused of it. Uh, he was paying us to kind of just disrupt a lot of the Imperial stuff going on and uh, stuff with the Visorian family. And really, we were just meant to be, you know, a proxy, like, start shit with them and they can use it to sweep in political power, but... I guess you could say some of them are kind of in the cause of that. Like, the Trenicels don't like the Visorians, but they hate the Empire, too. So, they're kind hmm. of allies in that sense. None of them have talked to us since Zelfar got pinched, but I'm guessing that none of them know about us from Zelfar. So, what happened to Zelfar? Did they execute him? You know, I don't honestly know. Uh, I think we would have probably heard if he was executed, but he definitely was taken and no one's seen him in years. I don't know if he's rotting in some, you know, far off prison in the empire or what, but if anyone hasn't, no one's managed to find him around here yet. So. So that kid's here. Like he won't talk yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, look, and right about that time, uh, the half elf that bandit that walked away into the back room kind of comes dragging you. You can hear this guy yelling, "Let me fuck it! God damn it! I can walk on my fucking own. Just let me!" Drags in uh, this what looks to just be uh, a male humanoid figure. Uh, has a bag over his head at the moment. His hands are kind of tied and he's being pulled along. I can fucking walk on my own if you just take the goddamn bag off my fucking head. Oh. Got a mouth on that one. Kind of gets distracted Crazy. near you guys, and uh, sorry, just kind of looks. Luke, you gonna fucking behave if I take the bag off your head? Whatever. Yeah, I'll fucking behave. I, I mean, what the fuck else am I gonna do right now? Really? Come on. Sorry, he's like, what? Hey. Fuck it. I mean, hold on. Tez, if he spits you guys, on you me, guys hit cool him. with him? You guys, you guys cool with me? Uh, you know. I don't, I don't actually know who this kid it, like fully is yet. So if he ends up being like some nobles kid, like I don't know if you're okay with him seeing you, but I figured I'd ask before I open that up. Before I mean, you take the bag off, have to leave, it, right? B before you take the bag off, I said I'm gonna get right in his face and just look at him. That way, right when the bag comes off, my giant lion, terrifying <laughs> lion face is staring at him. Saria immediately has to try and like suppress a laugh and goes and pulls the bag off of the head. Uh, you guys immediately see this uh, what looks to be imperial lineage, uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, 
uh, pale skin, human, uh, very, very handsome at this point. Can't be more than like 18, 19 ish, somewhere in that range, like young. Uh, as soon as the bag comes off his head, his eyes kind of open up and he sees you, your face, Ted, and goes, Holy cheese, it's kitty fucking titty whiskers. What in the fuck? Okay, hold on. Ha ha ha. Um, can I get a new pair of underwear, please? You're going to take it easy and answer every single question we ask. How does that sound? Like, I don't have a choice, but I really want one. And also, can I... Seriously, the underwear. Like, I might... It's going to get real unpleasant for... Uh, I'll use press kind of digitation to clean an area. Oh, that's an uncomfortable situ <laughs> sensation, but now it, I guess I'm clean, so... Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to interrupt. Did you say... <laughs> Kitty fucking titty whiskers? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. I, I think that's what he said. I think I'm pretty sure that's what Hold on. Oh. <laughs> that had me over here between, dying. Between I'm sorry. Immediately seeing that and then kind of pooing myself a little bit and then having magic wipe my ass, I'm not entirely sure what's going on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. Hi. What's up? How's so, it going? What's your name? Luke. Okay, what's the other part of your name? Lux. <laughs> L-U-X. Does it ring any bells? Finn and Loki. You both recognize that last name. Not for the reason you think it is. It's not a family name. Specifically, it's definitely not a family name. Lux is the name given to Imperial Bastards. Who? <laughs> Oh, yeah, kind of a in a to compare it to Game of Thrones, it would be like being named Snow. So, you know, doesn't have a family name. Give him the name Lux. So, yeah. cool. So, what brings you to uh, luxurious Elvenon? I heard the women were loose and the card tables were looser. How'd that work out for you? Well, one of those things ended up being true, and the other one pinched my balls so hard it hurt. Yep. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the women. Oh, no, we heard about your gambling debts. <laughs> yep. That, uh... Yeah, thankfully that's paid off. That was nice of that guy. I still don't know who the hell he was, but... <laughs> well, that brings us to the next little bit. Why would the Empire arrest that dude that helped you out for trying to kill you? Oh, did the did the part where I someone actually did try to kill me not uh, get relayed? Like, someone no. did try to kill me, but it wasn't why that did, guy. Why did they try to kill you? Well, I don't know. Beats me. I was heading back to my fucking inn, and a couple dudes grabbed me and said they needed to take me someplace, and they were going to fucking murder me. I managed to break free and just kept running. Why what would somebody these men try to look kill like? You? Could not tell you. It was literally nighttime, and I'm not going to lie. I was about three sheets to the wind, uh, and they were and they all had like s stuff on their face. Like they didn't sound elven. That helps. I don't know, but I mean that's not saying a lot. There's a lot so of fucking. You know, so why would somebody want to kill you? I mean, your last name tells me that something a fairly interesting story when you compare that add that to the your Look, face. Buddy, la last names ain't worth dick anywhere uh, mm -hmm. if you're not, you know, from one of the big cities. And I'm not from one of the big cities down there. So it's just a name to me. Couldn't tell you why they wanted to kill me. Well... So you have no clue. Just random, like you just came to town. I mean, so, I wasn't supposed to come to town. Like my, you know, my dad told me not to, but that was about it. Who's your dad? No one important, really. Just said, listen, hey, listen to, to your parents. Uh, at, at this point, anyone who wants to can roll an insight check. Yeah. I definitely do. Yeah. That's the best roll I've had tonight. I'm up in his grill. 
Okay. Let me look at his. Okay. Uh, Tyler, Tez, Taylor. Uh, well, Loki and Finn, it, you're not able to put. You can t- you can tell he's lying. You just don't know like mm-hmm. what about. Yeah. Like there, he's said a lot full of, of shit. He's, yeah. yeah, he said a lot of bullshit. So like it's kind of hard to see what exactly is sticking in this conversation. Uh, Tyler, Tez, and Taylor though, all the T's. Uh, you can pick up on it. Yeah, his, he's definitely he doesn't want to talk about who his dad is. Uh, it that probably has something to do with it, but hard to tell exactly how important that dad would be um, in this. So mm. definitely misleading you on that part. I'm going to get right in his face. Uh, yeah. Here's the I thing, Luke. I told you to I tell you're full of shit. shit. I mean, I was until this guy got up in my face earlier. I can't say I am now. Uh, you should start telling the truth. Because Tess hasn't eaten in a while. And he does like white he meat. Does he eat people? I eat uh, hearts out of fish. Do you eat people? I would tear your heart out and eat it, and I wouldn't even care. Go ahead and roll an intimidation check with advantage, because Finn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, now I kind of wish I had something left in the tank, because I definitely just felt something loosen back there. Um. Not pooping yourself. It's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yes, dude. Come on. We didn't even touch you. I can't keep it together. Let me see something one second. Finn, you hear a voice in your head. Oh. Uh, I can tell you, but I'm going to get in trouble if I do, and I definitely don't want to do it in front of these people. Oh, we'll talk back in his head. I can talk inside people's heads, too. You hear him. You hear him. Uh, it's like a, holy shit. <laughs> oh, oh uh, this is cool. It's usually not both directions. This is actually kind of handy. Usually I just talk oh. at people. Oh, this is dope. I've never actually met someone. Getting off topic. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cards on the table. My, my dad is actually fairly important. Uh, I'm from the north. And uh, nice. technically, I'm very far north uh like the city of stonefall keep north um Ooh. yeah i'm not supposed to be here i was very much i was very much told not to go south of the black rise and i did um and if i get caught by anyone down here it's going to be real bad so <clears throat> how about you help me get out of this situation with these people and I'll spill any fucking beans you want me to. I mean, I think that's... Yeah, I mean, we can probably talk them into letting you go. As long as you tell us, like... You know, as long as you give us all the info we need. <clears throat> yeah, I... I can give you... Yeah. You don't have, like, a sister that can turn into a wolf, do you? No, but that sounds dope as shit. Yeah, she is pretty cool. She's super scary, though. Are they just staring at each other? Yeah, they're just staring at each other. What's going on? Ari at this point is like, are you two gonna, like going to fuck or something? Because this is kind of weirding me out now. <laughs> yeah, they're totally going to fuck. Mean much people. They're totally going to fuck. I'm just concentrating really hard, convincing him. Like he's fuck? ready to he's ready to talk. No, weird. Luke's just. I mean, yes. Yes, we were. That is exactly what we were doing. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> your dad's that? nobody. Yeah, your understand. dad's nobody important. You don't know who's trying to kill you, <clears throat> and you've never did you, and you never like did the kid that paid off your debt say anything to you? I mean, he asked about who I was, but I didn't tell him much because there's not a lot to tell. He so was, you know, yes. just made were you as convincing with him. with him as you were with us? He and I were both drunk, so probably. Okay. Truth be told, I think he was also trying to like just make friends while drunk, like I was. So 
I don't think he actually gave a shit that I was in trouble with my whole gambling debt thing. I think he was just doing it for shits and gigs. Yeah, I can see that. So, uh, am I free to go? And he looks over at Saria, and Saria's like, no, you're a fucking meal ticket. I'm gonna find out who the hell you belong to and ransom you. Oh, that seems like a lot. Well, I mean, he's clearly some noble's, you know, fucking spawn. Yeah. He just won't tell us which ball sack he came out of. Well, but it's bastard son, so... It's still a ball sack. Yeah, who says he rich. won him back? Yeah, it's debatable how much money we... I mean, somebody's obviously trying to kill him, so... I mean, unless you're... And he said they didn't sound elven, so that means most likely human, so that means probably imperial. So, unless you're looking to, like, sell him to the imperials... I mean, money's money. You and I Ugh. both know money. Like all money runs the fucking world. If I want to run, if you want to run a rebellion, and I want to run whatever the fuck I'm doing here, money's needed. Oh yeah, we got that. Wait, like m money? Yeah. Like Good a for barrel you. full. Dude, okay, I may have been unclear when we started this conversation about what we're doing here and why we're meeting with you. We are going to help you guys be more effective, and if that means giving you money, we will do that. Yeah, okay, fuck it. So I mean, Yeah, if, you're gonna get, if you want to give us money, sure, we'll take it. If he wants to go set some buildings on fire, we'll do it. Well, I mean, is that is that where we need to go here? I mean, that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to get to the the bottom of. Like, where's the best place to start? Like, you know, where's the best place to light the match? Just kind of start this out. Is it making the the Syrians look weak? I mean, do they have interests we can take out? I mean, is there like a you know, is one of them into like lady boys and you know where he hangs out at night and we can go like take him out he's one of them like a slave trader we can expose him for like what's the dirt like where do we where do we start setting this town on fire getting this fucking empire out well funny enough that you say that uh the visorians would be the weak point to go after um well, not weak point, but you get what I'm saying. They're what you need to hit. Um, they're not... I mean, they're pretty powerful, but you take them out, someone else is going to step in, and Visorians are really the only reason the Empire's held as much power here as it has over the, you know, ever since the Conquest. You know, the Visorians literally have been in power since the Conquest. They sold us out. So, you take them out, you have a pretty easy rebellion on your hands at that point. Uh, as far as making them weak, um, I mean, they have a couple of heirs that you could probably go after. Uh, I think one of the, or I think the daughter is, like, I think she's about to get married off. I don't think that's really important, though. She's kind of a social butterfly and some mage, though. Uh, the scion of the family, I think he does, was, like, merc or like mercantile stuff up in Leyladel. Uh but he's also kind of a confirmed bachelor, so I don't know what his deal... I mean, you know, you can look into that if you want. Uh, should I start giving you names? Is that what needs to happen here? I mean, business interests, like... We just need to figure out where where the best place to start with, like, making them not have power. And do we need to take care of the kid that's in jail for trying to get Luke killed? Hey, Probably wonder, not a bad idea to start Should there. we let if Luke you... go? And then, like, we could hide, like, Tyler can turn into an animal and, like, hide. Like, I can kind of be invisible now. That's a new thing I can do. Uh, oh. Maybe we let him go, and then, like, he goes to his inn, he hangs out in his room, he waits for these people that are trying to kill him to show up, and then we jump them, and we put the screws them, find out who they are, and then maybe we can get, like, the... I forgot his fucking name already. Trishnell. Trinell. Trinacell. Trinacell, that's the one. Get yeah, him out Luke of jail. Luke chimes in at that point. I really don't like this idea of me being bait. 
It's a great idea, Luke. Stop you like talking. the part where you get to get out, though? And we're there. It's not like we're going to just... Like, you're not, like, on a hook. You're more like... Am, the am I not, though? It feels, out in the field it feels like the it's a metaphorical hook, if anything. You're the perfect bait. The master bait, as it were. <laughs> well, now I, I like see it what you last. did. <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of thinks. I mean, I mean, do you want? I mean, do you want? Al, she problems. wants to ransom you, right? Is that a better option than we let you go and then follow you and see who's trying to kill you? Luke goes. I'm ideally, I just leave. You know, that'd be kind of nice, but something tells me that's probably not on the table here. I mean, how yet. tough are you? Hmm. Like, hmm. um, like if we cut you loose, toss you a fucking knife, you think you can get out of this room alive? Like having to go through all of you, probably not. Yeah. Um, okay. Like, how many think you could get? You think you could get me, Luke? Uh, oh, he's a fucking big to boy. Actually, staying and fighting, I'd probably just try to fucking dip out. If I'm being entirely honest. So I mean, if we let you go, and we don't use you to draw out your pursuers, like, let's say they're not just going to catch you. I mean, they had you, right? Like you got away and ran, but yeah, I did. You know, well, they I, got I, hands you on did get me, but I was also drunk as fuck. Like that's not hard. I let everyone. Are touch you gonna me stop? Are you done drinking? Are you gonna drink anymore? I've unfortunately been sober for two days. It's the worst fucking feeling in the world. Yeah, you're gonna be shit house again. Forty five minutes after you get out, and you're gonna get it grabbed would be again. Longer. It would be forty five minutes after leaving the city. How are you gonna leave the city? You think these people are trying to kill you aren't watching the exits? He says in your head, I have a way out. That was where I was heading before I got pinched. But I want to know who was trying to kill you. I really don't Mentally. know. But I really do. <clears throat> Sorry at this point chimes in. Okay, you guys have that look like you're about to fuck <laughs> again. Okay, look, if you want him, you can have him. <laughs> Honestly, he's starting to give me a fucking headache just being in the same fucking room as him. So, and he, he's going to bring more heat on us than I want anyway. So, if you have an idea to use him, feel free at that point. Like, and Luke, Luke has this look on his face like, I don't know if this is an upgrade or not. <laughs> but immediately, like, slowly holds his hands out that are tied together. He's like, can uh, someone, you know, eh? Huh? Eh? Huh? Tez can cut it with a big giant claw. Just, yeah. Oh, a lot. The rope or whatever. You know, I don't know what I was expecting, but somehow I'm still really glad that I don't have anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, he just kind of rubs his wrist after that. Like, now Luke, don't you go running anywhere. You stay right here. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tez still struggles with that impulse control, like that prey drive. So when smaller things like dart away from him, like sometimes it's just natural that he'll just pounce. So his eyes get a little wider and his hand gets a little clutched, like, clutched a little closer to his chest. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what we mean by don't go anywhere. Yep. I just snort, snort in his face. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, I can also what's turn into a big cat like and, and cheese. <laughs> why, does, why does it smell like bad feta cheese? It's goat's milk. He's a big oh. fan. I like to drink goat's milk. But I also like to drink blood. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of really mixed vibes from this group. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Like, some of you seem like you're friendly, and then the others are, you know, threatening to eat me. And... Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, you know, we have both the carrot and the stick, so. It's, mm -hmm. I, was just like, I want you to make an informed decision. Your yep. choice, Luke. Yep. Yeah. I, I do the stuff like we I need you to do. One. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, he says right. into your head, he says into your head again. Get me the fuck out of here, please, and I will. Well, I will talk. Like, just, yeah, I know. That's what we're doing. 
All right, Saria. So, how about this? Why don't you guys figure out the best way to weaken the Viserians? Do we need to crack this Trino Trelini kid out of jail? Trenicell kid's probably locked up somewhere in your Kai Visoria. Uh, I can look and see where he is if you're wanting to break him out. Might not be a bad idea. Um, yeah, why don't you start let's, working let's on that angle it. too? Okay, we'll do we'll do some recon and everything. Having the Trenicells on our side again wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I don't know who's been running them since Zelfar got pinched though, but I can I can find that yeah. out. We'll see if and they can, haven't given you any we'll money. We'll see if Boozy Trenicell can point us in the right direction. Guess we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll figure that out and see if I can't dig up some info on the uh, Visorian kids. See which one of them might be a smart target. Um. Oh, and if you've got any kind of like uh, in with, uh, there's another guy in town, uh, some business guy, Imrian, I think. Uh, yep. he's really, he's kind of buddy buddy with the Vitorians. Uh, that would be if you want to break them up, that'd be cool. Yeah, do you have an in with him? Uh, no, I just know he's like he owns most of the businesses down on like Thalethrial Wharf and has a house what's somewhere he? in Leyladel, but good luck getting in there. Yeah, what's he uh, what's he into? Is he like like the ponies? Like, do you guys? Like, what's the best approach for him? You know, he keeps to himself. He doesn't really come to much of the social gatherings. It's only on, by, like, special requests of the Visorians that he shows up at any of them. So I think he doesn't really like dealing with the highfalutins, which can't fucking blame him, really. But, <sighs> um, yeah, I've got no clue on that. I mean, if you have some, like... Yeah, I mean, we'd have to we'd have to check and see. I don't know if you have any ins on that or not. <clears throat> I mean, we're kind of. I mean, they're they they're from here, but this part of town we're new to. So I'll pull a hundred gold out. Oh, all right. Hand it over. That's just to start with. Like that's nothing. That's like literally pocket change right now. You see her look at like the hundred gold, and she has this look in her eyes like this is more than her entire family has ever made in their lifetimes. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yep. Dude, uh, when we, we say we're, we're trying to topple the and get the empire out of North, we're not fucking around. Yeah, that much is uh, kind of obvious now. Um, and so yeah, make sure, we, like your crew knows, like this is like grown folks' business. This isn't like fun and games, like spray yeah. painting walls. There's all. Believe me, I'm going to I'm going to call moot tonight and everyone's going to be on the same page about this. Um, for now, uh, when you're ready to meet with us again, like when you have more info on where that kids are being held or an approach for Emrian or anything about the Syrians, uh, leave us a message at whatever that inn was that or that tavern was that we were at earlier the royale yeah the royale can do and uh if you need to get in contact with us i mean well you're about to go up the back like this door anyway but uh you'll know where you can find us here <clears throat> okay uh yeah just the leave the message at the royale for abe froman <laughs> Sorry, I had to laugh at that. Yeah, all right, got it. It's a sausage it's king of Chicago. <laughs> it sure <laughs> is. Yeah, uh, we'll leave. We'll leave a note for him. And uh, she just kind of points you guys over. There's another like door that you guys can leave out of that isn't the portal because the portal's by now powered down. So, uh, but well. You just in case we don't hear back from you soon enough, we're going to go... We're planning on killing the torch. So... We might have to go gear up and take care of that, so... 
if we're not around for a few days, that's probably where we're off to. If we don't come back, assume that we did not succeed. And this whole rebellion thing, you should probably just let it go. Don't know who that is. Sounds important, but noted. I mean, nobody this dude's, like, this dude's burning whole villages. Nobody even knows who like, he is. Doesn't anybody yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, a lot of info. The Empire has a lot to do with what ne- what news gets around. Like every time we we hear, every once in a while, a village gets burned, but it's usually because there's a bunch of terrorists there or something, which I'm assuming is bullshit. But that's not. True. It's it's the torch. That's the, who's burning the villages. Oh, he's a super powerful sorcerer, I assume, wizard, magic guy. Sounds horrifying. Hope you kill him. We will. That's the idea. Well, have fun with that. I'm gonna. I guess reorganize a gang into a militia. Have fun. Yep. See ya. And uh, you get directed out one of the side doors here and puts you in an alleyway. You guys, just based on the smell, you can tell you're back in the canal district. Uh, and the, like, as you guys are walk through the door, the door shut behind you, triple locked. And you can see on the side of the building, it says Blooming Grove Trading Company. Nice. Or sorry, Blooming Grove Storage Company. Storage, not trading. My bad. So, but other than it, as you guys kind of walk back, you can hear the sounds of one of the main streets. You head over there. This looks like any other warehouse. You've walked by this specific one like five times at this point. So it's one hundred percent just a uh, hidden in plain sight kind of deal. Okay. Good to know. Luke's kind of there with you. Uh, tucked away in the back a little bit, like trying to make sure he's not an obvious sight. So, uh, where are we heading? If I can ask. Well, we're, I mean, back to your hotel, right? You gotta get your stuff, don't you? Right. My hotel that I definitely had a room at. Where were you sleeping? I wasn't. Uh, very irresponsible, Luke. Look, I like had just rolled into town. I hadn't figured that part out yet. I was trying to have fun. Admittedly, maybe I should have gotten a room somewhere before I got sloshed and lost a bunch of money, including most of my money, but... I yeah, mean, usually that's the first step. It sounds like you, you lost other people's money, too. Up. Yeah. I mean... You owe that man for that gambling debt. When we break him out, you're going to pay him back every copper. I mean, that part won't be a problem. Like, I can pay the money back. Um, Just not right now, obviously. And he kind of, like, pats his pockets and everything, like, has nothing. All right, so... Spill. Kind of looks around, like, in the street, like... You got a quieter place we can go to? Yeah. Quieter place in in the city? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, uh, yeah. Let's, I guess, go there, then? Where are you guys taking him? Um... I don't know, is there a... Tavern? Yeah, Bar? so... We don't want to take him all the way back yeah. to the Rebel Yell or anything. I mean, you can no. take him back to the Royale if you want to find someplace a uh, little like less popular or something like that. There's plenty of taverns that you can go to. Yeah, I was thinking maybe not the Royale since that's kind of... I was just going to pick someplace close. Okay. Uh, not too far away. If you go into Old Elvenaria, uh there's a couple of taverns right on the edge of uh, the Riverside. Uh, specifically one called the Riverside that you can just go to. Uh, not the best place, but not the worst either. Okay. All right. You head there. By this point, it's uh, early afternoon, so um, dinner crowd isn't in yet. Just a couple tables open. Uh, Luke kind of looks around. Do you have a room here, or what? What are we? Are we just chilling? No, let's just get a table. 
kind of looks around. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, goes and sits down at one of the corner tables, kind of just looking at everything, like watching. You can tell he's scared out of his fucking mind, and part of it's you guys, and part of it's just like being back out in the open again. Yeah. Hey, Corey, can I, I got to take five real quick. Yeah. Uh, at that point, let's go ahead and take a quick break, uh, just for bio and whatnot. Perfect. So, I am back. Welcome back. 
Hmm. My audio quality all right. I had to switch headsets because my other one was starting to die. But sound good. Sounds fine to me. You're good. All righty, good. Hello. Welcome back. All right, looks like we're just waiting on Matt then. No worries. I'm back. Welcome back. Yo. All right. So, yeah, Luke Lux uh, immediately goes over, sits in one of the corner tables with you guys, and kind of just still has this like paranoid look around his face. So, uh, what do you want to know? Um, I mean, who are you, and why is somebody trying to kill you? Okay, so only real reason I can think of that anyone would probably want to kill me other than the gambling debt stuff. Uh, what, my dad is one of the noblemen uh, up in Stonefall Keep. Um, and I guess that technically makes me a political figure, even though I want nothing to do with any of that. So I get, I would guess that would be why. So they try to kill you so they can pin it on that dude to frame him. So it's probably more about him than you. Could be. I mean, it would also rile up the North if I died, I imagine. I mean, my dad's not, like, going to be indifferent to that, I would guess, but... I mean, not saying, like, he could start a war over it or anything like that, or would, but... I imagine it would probably sour whatever relations there are. I don't. I don't know if there are relations. I don't know. Not uh, really my too, cup they of tea. Can, they pin it on an elf, and all of a sudden, it's terrorists kill them. So the empire can solicit assistance from your father to help bring the killers to justice. I mean, I could see that too. I mean, it's kind of crazy that they're blaming it, like calling me and. Imperial diplomat. That's definitely not what I am, but 
It's wild. I don't think I've ever felt this important. It's fucking weird. I don't know if I like it. Well, I mean, do you want to catch the people that are trying to kill you, or do you just want to get out of here? I'm not going to lie. Part of me just kind of wants to get out of here. Um, I mean, if I had to guess, it was, it's probably some... You're probably right. Someone tied to the Imperials or something like that, but... I don't know if I necessarily want to be sticking around to be bait for that. I'd rather, I think I'd rather just get the hell out while I can. What all you guys think? I feel kind of bad for him. Yeah. But we obviously are going to use him as bait. Right. Well, that's what I'm asking. I think you were put here for a reason. And that's to help us. If you're talking about, like, fate or something, I'm not entirely sure I agree with you, and I definitely don't think I believe in fate after that. Especially not after having, you know, literally shit myself about an hour ago, so... What say the rest of you? I mean, I'm good with whatever. I mean, I'm fine with just cutting him loose. I mean, he says he's got a way out of town safely. He doesn't know. Like, there's no reason that somebody's wanting to kill him other than, like I said, to frame up this other dude, so. Yeah, uh, like, I didn't, like I said, I didn't get a room, but I did, like, have the foresight to stash a couple things in a spot, um, including my ride out of here. So, like, if I can get that stuff... I can call in my ride and I can get the hell out. I mean, I guess we could like walk you to your stuff just to make sure nobody tries to kill you in the meantime. And if yeah. somebody does try to kill you and we were to kill them right back, then who's to say? I mean, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Does I, I you compromise feel a little, and he looks over at Tez. He, he kind of looks at Tez. He's like, I already feel a little safer. Okay, fine. Orcs sort of use them as bait. No, let's Still leave him. Really be. don't like that word. Let's leave him be. Well, yeah, I mean, we're just gonna like walk him back to his stuff, and then he's gonna get out of town. So we're actually we helping him out, him. Tez. We yeah, we get to be his bodyguards. Oh, good. We might get to kill then. We just might. <laughs> so yeah over over the uh meta question here are you actually trying to lay him out as bait by doing this or are you just genuinely like maybe we'll run into it but it's not a big deal if it doesn't that's i'm the latter i don't give a shit if, yeah like it there doesn't seem to be enough behind him them wanting to kill him to make it worth like tracking down who did it besides if they try to kill him we'll okay like i said stop him Gotcha. Okay. Noted. Yeah. Uh, he just kind of looks around. I mean, yeah. If you guys want to walk me to my stuff, uh, it's not. Let's see, we're on the riverside. Where was it? Uh, it's up north a little ways. Like, wherever Celethrial Wharf is. I think that's a that's a place, right? That sounds like a place. Yeah, that's a ways north, right? Yeah, you're uh, you're aware it's the pink district up here, the five. Yeah, uh, you guys, for the record, are down That's there. It's not just a fucking hop and a skip, buddy. But yeah, it's not far. I mean, I have something I can give you in return when we get up there as well, if it sweetens the deal. Sure, you we're nice enough to get me out of that. Hmm. Cool. So should we get going? It's starting to get late. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I'd like to go home. Oh, plus it's getting cool. dark. So that uh, means that, like, if they try to kill us in the night, then we can. Good. I love a good night fight. Maybe there's, there's the moon out. I, I'm suddenly regretting all of the things I just said. And yeah. 
Dude, we're super good at this stuff. You're fine. Yeah, we've gone through a lot of shit. I am not. (laughs) I am not. (laughs) You don't have to be. We are. Don't worry. We're great at it. Have you seen my hammer? I'll put my hammer right in his face. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. It's just as terrifying as you are. It's a big old fucking hammer. Yeah, it is. Very big. Mm -hmm. Don't mind him. He just likes showing off his hammer to people. I do. Thank you. Yep. Come yep, with it's us. A, it's a nice hammer. That's that's a nice hammer. Maybe we'll okay. get to use it, but let's <laughs> go. I really hope not. And uh, with that, you guys head out from the Riverside Inn. Uh, everybody go ahead and give me perception checks as you guys start making your way to Celethrial Wharf. I'm assuming the twins are leading because you're a little more familiar with the city and actually know how to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I gotta no, hold on. Now I gotta roll something. <laughs> Jesus, look at those perceptions. Okay. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Look uh, at most of those perceptions throughout the entire trip. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you're. <laughs> Tez, you're, still your that, like, head, you're watching him a lot. You're watching Luke a lot, and he's still very much like on edge because he's like, oh god, this giant lion dude. I think Tez right really wants to like eat him or something. <laughs> <laughs> he won't, yeah, but he, I think he, he's he, like, man, I just want to kill that guy. I don't there's a part I'm not of you, sure I like, like old, him. It's like the old barbarian part of you, <laughs> like the rook island in you that's just like, this dude is very meek and like giving off this like I'm terrified energy and I'm just fucking eating that. Poor like, uh, it's God. making me want to destroy oh, him. That's funny. Okay. That explains my poor perception so, then. Yeah. You're you're it's still entirely focused on <laughs> him, and he can't focus on anything other than <laughs> you. So he's completely out of it as well. Uh the rest of you though are keeping an eye out like he's at this point he has like a hood that he's grabbed he's snagged a cloak from somewhere uh at some point threw that on so he's kind of like covered up a little bit as you guys are heading through the town uh avoiding most of the patrols you definitely go around the back of kai visoria so to avoid uh having to walk in anywhere near that fucking light blade uh but make your way up into celethrial wharf for the first time uh which means where is my note on it. Uh, as soon as you guys start walking into this area, you can see this is supposed to be a like very high priced, like high luxury commercial district because everything you see here, there's no real like wharf part to it. It doesn't smell like fish or anything like that. All well, other than a few specialty restaurants that you pass by, but you start seeing signs and businesses all over the place uh, for just different kinds of shops and things like that. You see a couple different places that look like they advertise like specialty services. You see one that's called Elf B and B. Uh, you see the Pelion's Post Pals, and it looks like there's a bunch of people that keep running in and out of there, like doing delivery work. Uh, you see one shop that's Imrian's Hail Foods. Uh, another one that is Elark Enchantment Firm. It looks like uh, it has a bunch of like specialty enchantment or enchanted items, kind of just up in the window there. Uh, one place that's named Shell Shack, and it has a giant clam uh, kind of. S- like symbol up on the roof Uh, smells very much like good seafood there. Uh, Just you're deluged with all these different businesses and the kind of clientele around here. Those like, there's a lot of people doing like delivery work, like taking stuff and leading heading over into Layla Dell. Uh, And you get the sense. It's probably like a lot of the nobility ordering in essentially like you have this high, like this luxury district right there why the hell would you actually go there for it when you can just pay someone a couple, you know, silver and have them go get your food for you? Uh, so it's kind of got that vibe. But you do see some people, like, at some of these taverns and restaurants and everything, sitting and eating and dining. Uh, and as you kinda, you're kind of you kind of going through, just keeping your head on a swivel there, uh, eventually Luke kind of looks around right over near uh, one of the Shell Shack locations. He goes, here, here, this is where I... Uh, and ducks into one of the alleyways. 
once you guys are in the alleyway, uh, he immediately like kind of starts looking around. He's where this one pops open one of the barrels and in it, he pulls out just a bat. What looks like a bag of coins uh, immediately starts fishing out in one of them uh, and flicks it over towards you guys. If one of you wants to catch it. One of us catches but it. Once you catch it. Yeah. One of you catches it. Uh, Oh, shit, sorry. You look at it yeah, and it. it's uh, you catch it and it looks like this. You kind of hold it. It's not a coin. Uh, it's coin shaped, but a bit bigger than that. Almost like the size of a coaster uh, made out of some kind of weird rock. You're not entirely sure uh, with a couple of like runic insignias in it. Uh, he kind of like looks like you can hold it. So that is uh, kind of looks around again. That's a that's a token of safe passage into the north. Uh, if you have that on like a wagon or a ship or something like that, uh, or if you show it to someone like uh, like part of the northern guard, uh, they'll they're not going to bug you. But also, if you have it on like your vehicle, um, they'll like you can pass into the north without any issue. There's there's enchantments that can keep certain things out of the north. Uh, like it's meant to you know repel stuff that isn't supposed to be there. Like Imperials, you know, uh-huh. um, that'll that'll let you through without any issue. Nice. Um, We're definitely not Imperials. For my so. ride, for my ride, he pulls out another coin, uh, kind of holds it up to his ear, and you hear him whisper a uh, mnemonic for a spell. Hey, yeah, uh, I know you said not to call you unless it was an emergency. Uh, I need a ride. Like, back home. Yeah, can do. And he throws the coin over into the back of the alley, like, deeper. And there's a soft little flash of purple energy, and standing before you is a familiar figure. Someone you literally talked to earlier today. Of Andre. Ooh. Eh. We know uh, you. Oh. Uh, shh, 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 shh. That, oh. I was not expecting any of you. Um, well, this is awkward. Really awkward. Luke, did you meet with them? Have you told them who you... Luke goes, I, they, they know where I'm from. It's fine. Like, they're, they're cool. Like, I think. And he kind of looks over at Tez again. <laughs> oh. Yes. Vondre's just like, they're, they're trustworthy. I can, I trust them wholeheartedly. Um, Hold on one second, and he takes a piece of chalk, draws on one of the walls, and it turn, lights up into this blue portal. Luke, go home. I'm sure your dad has plenty of things to say to you. And uh, try to keep my name out of it if you can. Luke just kind of like hangs his head a little bit. He's like, turns around and looks at you guys. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And hopefully if we ever meet again, it's under better circumstances and one of you isn't trying to eat me. Only if you're lucky, Luke. He wasn't trying to eat you. He was thinking about <laughs> eating you. That's very different. It was under consideration. I... If he wanted to, we would not be able to stop him. So It's true. You know, that's fair. And on that note, and he literally like takes a back step <laughs> in the portal and just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and the portal disappear. Farewell. The portal's gone. <laughs> oh, he left quick. Avant- Vondre's just kind of staring at you guys. Well, that was weird. And you were considering eating him? No, I he was, was just, just bullshit, scaring so. him. Yeah, so he threatened to have Tez eat him if he didn't stop lying. Ah, uh, yeah, Luke has a bit of a silver tongue and doesn't always know when to quit when he's ahead. Uh, an unfortunate part of, well, his upbringing. Um... Listen, I would very much appreciate it if you don't ever mention that man, that young man, to anyone back in you know where. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And uh, we'll we'll just forget we ever saw each other here for now. Hmm? Yeah. We'll, okay. We'll have a conversation okay. about this at some point. Yep. I'm sure we will. Toodaloo and disappears in a flash. 
small that world. About? That per- those perception checks stand. T- Joe Taylor. After the flashes and everyone's disappeared, you're still kind of you're at the edge of the alleyway a little bit, like watching this, and you've been interacting. Bit of motion catches your eye. Uh, there was someone across the street on a roof, looking right at you guys, and that person is now gone. I would inform the group what I saw. Oh shit! Well. Who was that? Didn't get a good look. We'll probably let's, find out later. Let's go find them. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll throw Elvis up, see if he can. <clears throat> go ahead and roll perception check for Elvis, please. Okay. I will make a new stealth roll. Ooh. Oh. It's definitely going to not beat a natural 23. Uh, Elvis, yeah, Elvis pops up into the air, starts flying around a little lazily. Uh, he's got a bit of night cover at this point, so, you know, no one's able to easily spot him uh, or distinguish him from, like, a bird or something in the sky. He does eventually pick up uh, about a block away. There is, I mean, there's plenty of, like, activity going around, but there's a dude uh, who looks to be unlocking a door, kind of looks, checks both directions before he unlocks the door and goes inside of a building. Uh, looks to be an unmarked building. Nice. Well, once he reports back, I will let everybody else know. We headed what there? What you just said? I th- I'd say so. Well, let's go. Let's do it. All right, you guys begin heading towards this unmarked building, exiting the Celethrial Wharfs, uh, and just brief, like, this unmarked building, there's literally nothing of note about it. It's just a plain uh, wood and daub, like, almost like a house, but it's a little bit too big. The house, like, the windows and spacing, it's a little off. Nothing remarkable other than that, though, on the building. Uh, No one inside, no lights coming from any of the windows, anything like that. Start heading where towards it, and that is where we're going to leave off for the night. As uh, you right. guys are good deal, going after something. Hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> so I will end the recording here. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.